Well, hello, and welcome everybody to the first episode of Let's Set the Tone. I'm your host, Fanboy Tone, and you might recognize me from things such as Banter and Babble, which is uh, what this is presented by. Uh, joining me tonight, today, for the first time, for episode zero as I'm calling it, the test stream, the one and only Dude79, my uh, co-partner or co-host, I guess, of uh, the normal Banter and Babble proper. I figured if we're going to do this, the best thing to do is to get this man in the hot seat right away and uh, make him sweat a little bit. So I feel like you're setting the bar kind of high, though, for like how attractive your <laughs> guests will be. It's up here, and everyone else is just going to come underneath. So you're kind of setting an expectation that's probably not going to be matched. You're right. You're right. But we're we're gonna uh, we're gonna attempt. I'm gonna do the best I can. You're doing got, good. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the best I can. So um, to kind of just explain a little bit, if you haven't uh, uh, noticed, or if you know some of you do, um, you know this is a. Uh, uh, <laughs> another passion project of course but something that's really been planned for a long time mm -hmm. is a lot of you do or don't know like i was saying like this is um it's it was literally right after the pandemic kicked in mm -hmm. that in my own home i originally had somebody come in working on getting my basement done for plans of being able to do this which was create some form of extra content at that time i was still you know, game streaming, I, maybe to Mixer, yeah, because it was later that year that Mixer crashed yeah. in, in the middle of the <clears> pandemic. <throat> we end up uh, all having to, uh, to move around. And, um, uh, you know, so the plan with that basement is a lot what you see here was just to have a really cool area to hang out, nerd out, but also to create some content as well, too. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, a, a lot of things have happened since then. Two homes, two basements, um, a divorce. So <laughs> yeah. there's been a lot going on, a lot of evolution, uh, a lot going on in life, and you know, uh, nothing ever goes the way it's planned. So, um, so that's why we're here finally. Um, I never really—it's funny—the name actually came much later, but the content <laughs> was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the content was uh, uh, was always planned. So, um, bear with us. This is going to be more of a okay. Let's get a feel for what this is going to look like aesthetically. Uh, and audio. So I'm going to start with that. Like, how do we sound out there, everybody? How do we look and sound? Let's start with the audio. Like, do we sound good? Does it sound all right? <clears throat> I took a little hit of my uh, vape pen, and now my throat wants to be raspy, so <laughs> really smooth. <clears throat> yeah, fuck you, Prime. You're a liar. Um, uh, does, it looks good? Okay, good. Awesome. Appreciate that. So, um, really sweet camera, so thank you. Uh is a bit not great. Okay. What are what are you saying is a bit not great? Like sounds muffled or something. Oh, okay. What oh, sounds muffled? Sounds muffled. That's interesting. Uh so we had pre-set this up f with uh Ant House to get everything all the levels good and I'm looking at my numbers and everything. All looks pretty solid so far. <clears throat> like I'm not peaking. Like I'm not peaking. Muffled and you're peaking. But not as bad as the first time. What does peaking mean? <clears throat> well, yeah, what is peaking? I, don't know, I, I what... know I know what peaking means. <laughs> yeah, he knows what... I what... definitely know what peaking means. But this is good. This is fine. Uh, you know, I want to try and iron a few of these things out as well, too, uh, to make sure it sounds solid. So not as bad, huh? I don't know if you want to try and test. Uh, and let me, I'm looking at those. I'm going to just change <laughs> something real quick. But, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Go right ahead. Just keep them occupied. Uh, docking does count, actually, Blanco. Um, uh... So we'll try to mess with this. I'll keep kind of talking so we can kind of keep uh, seeing. Uh, let us know. He just tweaked a couple of things. Let us know how that sounds. Um, but overall, this content, the, the plan for this content, so there's, there's really two parts. This is the, the conversational piece of it, the podcast side of it. Um, and then there's a whole other side of it as well, too, which is going to be uh, just me doing random activities, hanging out and talking with the chat. Now, this particularly, once the conversation starts going um unlike banter and babble which definitely leans more heavily into <coughs> excuse me the chat mm -hmm. uh this is going to be more of just us two so th it'll be a little bit less of interactive now that doesn't mean i'm not going to reference the chat if you guys got questions or got a funny bit or whatever you know sure um but uh other than that for the most part it's about uh these these conversations so um a little lower, but it's still the same. I can tell you exactly. A little exactly lower, what it's... but still the same. <clears throat> Does it sound clear, or is there like a staticky sound around the voices? An old Howard Stern broadcast. I think he just did that. That's just him saying because he knows I'm gonna do deviant shit. 
Uh, you know, and if you remember back in the day, um, if you were around for the Mixer days, you know, that was what I did a lot was, you know, I, I loved game streaming and doing the stuff that we were doing collectively. Mm -hmm. But game streaming, for me, because I get so distracted and zoned in, um, I wasn't good at recognizing the chat. And if the chat wanted to get going, well, I want I just want to talk to the chat. So that's why I kept leaning into that. And then right. you know, it would be 2.30 in the morning sometimes being hammered and just sit there talking, and I would pull up videos and just do all kinds of shit. And that, that was what was fun. So mids might be too high. Not sure I'm not. Mids? Impressed. All right, hang on. <clears throat> we'll check a little bit of that, too. I'm not aggressive yet, but I could definitely get there. So we'll check a little bit of the mids. I can also um, follow back up with Ant House, and uh, I should have seen if he was free today just to kind of get a uh, listen as well, too. How does it sound now? <coughs> I, I messed with the mids a little. I, I don't want to, like, mess around with this stuff too much. This might just be something we'll have to adjust after the fact. But Yeah. Is it is it is it tough to listen to, or is it just like, okay, there's a little something there, and we can still proceed? <laughs> yeah, are your ears bleeding, and this yeah, is a yeah. painful right, experience. Right, 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 right. And don't forget to hydrate. So that's where we're at. Um, so fast forward all this time, um, you know, trying to get Hold everything, trying okay. to get everything all set up. Um, you know, just trying to get all the pieces together. No one wanted to do. Uh, so the last four years, mostly what I've just been doing is observing. So I, I listen to a lot of different podcasts now, um, from conversationalists to comedians, mm -hmm. uh, even some documentary stuff, but. You know, and, and just kind of like looking at it from a different perspective, and and hoping that I can take you know the the goods with that as well too. So, just a small scratch and a little compressed bit, definitely. Are the mics plugged in good enough? I wonder. Oh, I mean, they're in. They're they're plugged in. <clears throat> um, hang on a second. I'm gonna change one more thing. We're gonna change one more thing. I appreciate you guys' patience. This is exactly what I intended was the the start of this to kind of talk about everything but also at the same time just kind of play with some audio so how does that sound does that sound a little bit better testing testing testies testies and I'll also say I don't really have a schedule planned right now and I don't know what that's going to look like um because I while I do love having the ability to chat with people um live I also at the same time know that this kind of because of the way the conversation is going to go with two people and mm -hmm. because it's not going to be super chat interactive it's going to live probably a lot better my intention is for um you know in other streaming platforms because you know on the go or whatever you know so um but who knows we'll see you know I, live here is great as well too so um but uh, uh yeah so that's kind of where we're at and i'm trying to think if there's anything else that i'm forgetting Anything that you think? I no, man. I'm just, you I'm just glad that? you're doing this because I know it's something that you're very passionate about, and it's one of the things I always notice about your mixer streams. You know, you'd be playing uh, Battlefront and games like that, but then you would get <laughs> right. sidetracked, and you would get, yeah. and not in a bad way either. Like the conversation would break out, the chatting would break out, and you would literally just sit there on your couch, have some drinks, and just chat with whoever popped in. It was always a good, fun conversation. Yeah. It was always just, it was very relaxing and very comfortable, and you're just like. Even if I was doing stuff, you could sit there and do something around the house and just listen to the conversation mm -hmm. and be entertained. And that's what I really enjoyed about it. Yeah, I appreciate that. And and that that's how it always was with me. It just after a while, it just started getting random. Like, yeah. I just didn't like, and, and that's why I stopped game streaming. So I'm like, this isn't really doing it for me. Like when I play a game, I want to focus on the game. I play a lot of single player games. So right. Like, I I get tunnel vision. I get gorp face, is what mm -hmm. we always call it. So, you know, this will give me the opportunity to continue that and do that. And and you know, honestly, and that's kind of in a small way how B and B became. A thing too, yeah. you know. So I mean, this all kind of makes sense. So it sounds sounds better. Okay, good. I appreciate that. So uh, maybe the highs are just a little too high, was it? Or I think we changed the mids, but I also lowered the compression a little bit. But like I said, I, I don't know, man. Like I feel like that box has just been kind of a, a nuisance since we've hooked it up. Yeah. So I mean, unless there's there and there's so many knobs on that thing compared to what I use at home, so that's why I'm not very useful yeah. with it. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, it's just uh, you do all your changes and um, <laughs> it sounds better through a TV. Well, that's that's a plus. It's a good thing. Well, and I, you know, um, when Ant House listened to it, he was listening to it on his headset, or probably actually through the computer. You know, he's, I'll, I'll, double, I'll send him a picture of this and say, mm -hmm. hey, what do you think? This is what we felt like we were, you know, as we were talking and listening live. So, um, as opposed to mobile, I, and I always feel like mobile's weird too. So, um, no, I appreciate that, Prime. Thank you. Appreciate you guys with all that uh, as well too. So, um, but yeah, so that, that's, that's. That's a lot of the story there. Um, you know, I can't wait to be able to do this more consistently. I have a list of folks 
uh, that I know because I mean clearly I don't know a whole lot of celebrities. Unfortunately, like I said earlier, Stevie Wonder, who is you know born and raised originally in this area, doesn't come home. No. <laughs> so uh, he doesn't give two shits about me. Uh, but uh, you know uh, the the point it isn't about a status though. To mm-hmm. me, it's about the conversation. Yeah. And I know a lot of folks, and I know a lot of folks that have a lot of interesting things that they do. Either mm-hmm. as a hobby, as a background, or whatever, you're definitely going to see half-assed beer on here. Yep. You know, um, you're definitely going to see Drassen on here at some point. Uh, you're definitely going to see um, Wentzilla. You know, he's a friend that does the action figure art that I'm a big fan of. Um, uh, Rohit is definitely going to be on uh, pretty <laughs> frequently. He needs, he's got a lot to say. And oh, yeah. He needs a platform, yeah. and I'm going to give him a platform to help say those sort of things. Yeah. Uh, you might even see a Prime Didact down here sometime talking about some Matrix or something. Or maybe some Kevin Smith stuff, huh, Prime? What up with that? Uh, Miz's mom is uh, hopefully available um, tonight because I'm bored. Um, and, uh, you know, other people that I have, he's like, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, um, and I do intend, I know she's going to have anxiety about it, but, um, you know, uh, Brittany, uh, my girlfriend, is very, she's very nerdy. She's very, like, particular about a lot of things. I think she, uh, she'd yeah. be a fun conversation as well, too, but... It's probably going to take a lot to get her on here as well. But I think it'll also be fun because then you can talk about, you know, relationship dynamics as well, too. And mm-hmm. I think that could be a, a good time. And then, who knows, maybe at some point I can get somebody I've been wanting to talk to for a long time, your wife, down here <laughs> for a conversation. Man, I'll just have to make sure I check all the drinks before you give them to her before she uh, starts talking or anything like that. So. <laughs> we'll just, we just want to let her drink, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then you, he'll probably be out of state hiding somewhere too if I can get her on. Co- More than likely, yeah. I don't want to be. I don't want to, to, to respond to any of the, the <laughs> right, accusations right, right. or you alleged probably, things I do. <laughs> right, right. And you probably don't want to admit it, but I think she's fucking hilarious. She's vi- like. The, you the, think she's hilarious with th- when it's at the at my expense. Yeah. That's when you find her most funny is when she's beating me down. Right. So I get it, yeah. Yeah, okay. she punches down on you, and that's perfectly fine. <laughs> but anytime when we're, you know, I usually talk with her probably for 10 There's been a couple times where I feel like I haven't gone downstairs for 15, 20 minutes when I'm at your home. Yeah, I'm downstairs, and I'm like, why she's, isn't Tone hanging out with me? Yeah, she's she's just, she's fucking incredible. So you're very you're very lucky. Uh, Let's to have get a good dude doing a cooking show. I'd be, dude, I would love to do I, some stuff I like keep that. telling him I, he needs to lean into the, the, the meats and stuff that he does. I know we talk about doing like a B&B hangouts outside while he's doing that, but I definitely think that you should probably focus See, on Yeah, I think it would be like interesting well because I'm not a great cook. You know, I'm somebody who's kind of like started that process late in yeah. my life where I like I want to make more food for my family. Right. I want to and, and part of that is TikTok with TikTok food because right? there's just so yeah. many recipes that people put out there and it's just like it's so much cheaper to go to the store now and buy stuff. I know shopping is expensive, but it's still cheaper than going out and ordering out every right. night. If you order buy pieces, make your stuff from scratch, it can it can be cheaper. And I just I love the whole cooking thing. I think it would it would be cool to kind of chronicle that, starting from like just an average Joe cooker to yeah. see what things I could get good at along yeah, the way. And That'd then be start, kind of fun. Yeah, and then start evolving yourself. Uh, and then try you know you watch TikTokers do things like maybe you take something somebody does and you're like you know what maybe let's try this or try that or something like that too. Uh, I mean Josh liked my my Cuban, so I mean that's maybe sandwiches is where I need to start. That's, that's a good start. Well, sandwiches are top tier they are they are the food of the gods yeah, so. they are the food of the gods so <laughs> well enough uh, of the uh uh the normal banter and babble i guess but uh let's let's kind of jump into it i got some oh. things here so um <laughs> turn on the ac please right i know i i, I just did actually it's, it's starting to get warmer around here in michigan again so um to really just start start it off and you know uh very simplistic i think you know and I, even though some of the folks clearly know you have gotten to know you over the time but Give me uh, a little bit about yourself. Like, just t- kind of tell everybody, like, about you. Who is the Dude79, <laughs> Brent, uh, the real Brent? You know, I, I – well, first of all, husband, father. Yeah. You know, the, I've got – those are my main roles. You know, those are the main – my main focus things in life, husband, father. And how do you think you are at those? Uh, husband, I mean, that's probably a question from, uh, uh, for the missus. Um, I think I'm pretty good, but I, I, I do feel like um, I'm not your typical – Husband, we're like, I'm in charge of the house. I pretend it. You know, I'll say those things. Right. But um, she's very mature and very responsible. And I learned uh, uh, early on in our relationship that uh, she's going to be the one I'm going to be leaning on. It's not going to be like vice versa, how a lot of guys think sometimes. Not all guys, but some guys like to feel like, oh, I'm the husband. I'm in charge. No. I don't need to be in charge of anything. So I'm very dependent on my wife, and she is very patient and then uh, as far as the father goes i just two boys mm-hmm. you know 11 and 7 kind of hitting that point where 
they're just starting to learn more about themselves and they want to be a little bit more independent, but they're just, they're my life. You know, I, I love being around them. I love watching them grow. I love helping them th- with things that they're curious about. I love coaching them. Uh, so husband, father first. Now past that, I am one of those, I think I'm one of those rare things where I am a nerd about shit. Mm-hmm. But I'm also a sports guy, mm-hmm. you know, because I mean, there, you know, I understand like in, in, in the world of video games and, and, and Star Wars and a lot of other nerdy stuff, they're like, oh, sports ball sucks, you know, and, right, and right, I get right, it. Right, right. But I love like nerd shit. I love video games. I love sci-fi. I love all that stuff. But I'm also super competitive. So I am also heavily yeah. into the sports as well. So football. I mean, football specifically, main, football is like my main that's thing. Your main sport. Uh, baseball is like a, is a, is is so much it's second, and then other sports I'll just watch just to watch. You know, right. if the if any Detroit teams are doing good, then my focus will turn to them. Right. But right now we're kind of like in a in a lull, <laughs> which is like I said, it's the weirdest time to be alive, mm-hmm. where the Lions are our team. I mean, that's really all we have. The Pistons are a debacle. The Wings yeah. are they're fluctuating, like yeah, they're yeah, trying, they're, they're, and you know, yeah. and Stevie Y we trust. Um, and then the Tigers are just starting to like fall apart. So. Uh, but, yeah, I, I love video games. I love movies. I love sci-fi. I love all that shit, but I also have a very competitive side. So I am into sports and, and things of that nature. But when it comes to hobbies, man, cooking, and weird enough as it is, uh, yard work. I love yeah, being you outside. Do seem to take that pretty I serious, love yeah. being outdoors. Uh, I'm envious of you having a zero turn. Yeah, because you're a pilgrim still <laughs> about how you do your lawn, yeah. I am very uh, – and, and it's p- because of my dad. Yeah. Like, he got me mowing the lawn when I was, like, really young. Yeah. And, like, at first I was like any other kid, like, oh, fuck this. I don't want to do this. Right. Just just pay me my money, and I'm out of here. But then, you know, you start to, like, pay attention to the things of, like, those straight lines and how it looks. Like, I am that guy who will stand there after I mow the lawn – and just hands on the hips and just admire my work for like a good 10 minutes. And then there was my brother, on the other hand, who would literally go out there, destroy the lawn, clumps of grass everywhere. It would look terrible. And then I would come home. I would come home to my parents' house where I'm just living and I don't want to do yard work. And I would see what he did and I'd be like, i got to mow this lawn again. <laughs> I'd go out there and okay. clean up the yard because it just annoyed me. But also, man, it's also very therapeutic because... Being a husband and being a father and, and, and working a full-time job can be exhausting. Yeah. And I feel like, man, when I can put my headphones in, it takes me about an hour and 40 minutes to do my lawn. That is an hour and 40 minutes of just zen. Jesus Christ. And you, your yard is not, like, massive. It's not. It's just the front and the back. Like, yeah. the, the, the backyard can take, like, yeah. five minutes. Yeah. You, the more stuff you keep adding, the less grass you have to worry that's, about. That's the idea. That so is add more the landscaping. Idea. Right, right, right. That's right. where the, the wife comes in because she's the green thumb. She does all the... Man, she... She crushes it. Like, she uh, is, like I'll do certain beautiful. parts of the yard. But she has that vision for everything else that makes it pop. But, yeah. no, I love being outdoors in general. You know, I love northern Michigan. You know, so, I mean, I love to travel. Uh, but, I mean, I'm just, I'm into a lot of things, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of things pique my interest. I feel like, I feel like that's, uh, I, I, I think the thing that out of all that, like, well, I mean, you're definitely right. Like, you're probably, yeah, husband, but you're definitely a... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I know I always kid about uh, the the kids because you're always so busy, but no, you're you're a, a good dad. You know, you put a lot into it. You know, and that's. I mean, it's really hard, to, I think, to look at a situation like that and just try to rank how good somebody is. Sometimes it's pretty obvious, right? But yeah. like, you know, I think it's fair to say that you know you, they're definitely a priority for you, mm-hmm. and to the point where sometimes it might be detrimental to the things you can and can't do. It but. Is. You know, you might half jokingly complain once in a while, but like, hey, I don't got time to do this or whatever. But you know that you enjoy what you're doing, and that mm-hmm. time is valuable. And um, and that's you know, that's not everybody has that in them as well, too. So right. I, I mean, listen, I, you know, I do see parents, or I do got friends that just they're they half-ass it, you know, as being a parent, right. and, and it's like you can't. Mm-hmm. It's a no, you, you really can't. You only get one. Time, you only get one chance to do it. You, you only really get do. one chance to make an impression. And, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. It, it can be really tough at times, you know. And, some, and I think the hardest part for me is, you know, we learn everything as a, being a parent from our parents. Yeah. You know, and my mom was the comforter. She was the one that was always consoling you when things got tough. Dad was the disciplinarian, but always wanted to be your friend. And he was, he was a really good father at that. Um, but I also feel like he had some things that he learned from his dad, yeah, which were different eras, and they yeah. did things differently when it came to disciplining and how they would, you know, 
I don't want to say they were stubborn, but they were a little stubborn in their ways. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I have taken a lot of what my dad did as a father, like, when raising me, and I've applied that to my job as a father. But I've also tried to adapt to the times and Mm -hmm. try to change things up a little bit, be a little bit more understanding, more sympathetic, and not Mm -hmm. be so quick to be like, nope, that's it, I'm dad, end of story. I try to be more, and I'm not saying my dad wasn't understanding, but I try to be a little bit more understanding of what kids are going through and trying to get that insight so you can relate to them a little bit better. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a, that's the best way to do it honestly at this point. And it's it, but it's 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 give and take, man. Like I I'm really I I always tell my kids I'm like, "Look, man, I want to be your friend. Mm-hmm. Don't make me be your dad." Yeah. You know, don't make me be dad. Yeah, don't, lay, don't don't make me lay down the fucking thunder. Yeah, that, that that's the main thing. That's what I always tell them. Like, "Look, man, like if you want me to be your friend and we can go out and do stuff, hang out, have fun and things things like that, uh, but don't make me be there. I mean, you have to be a dad. I get that. Like you, in tricks, right? You got to be a dad at times, but don't make me be a dad. Right. Like there's instances where I have to step up and be a dad. Oh, yeah, I've seen not it. to their, not no fault to their own. Where I just have to be a dad, but don't make yeah. me be a dad. Yeah, yeah. Don't do stuff that makes me have to go right. out and be a dad. Right. I'd rather be your friend. Yeah, I'd rather have a good time. So, no, that's great. Uh, and I, I definitely think that's a, a good philosophy as well too. But. Well, um, next one I got for you, um, you know, and there's this not a lot really to probably get into, but, you know, how did you and I first meet? Do you recall, do you even recall, like, one of the first times? Man, it was at the mall. Yeah. Uh, it was at the GameStop in the, in the mall. mall. Yep. And so I, 2010. I was just one of those fucking guys that showed up, like, hey, we're doing the midnight launch for Call of Duty or GTA. Yeah. It was usually one of those two games. Yeah. GTA or Call of Duty. Uh, and I remember, I think it was you, Rohit. Yeah. Who was at that store? Was Prime at that store? So... It was interesting because I feel like you started at the mall and then you ended up over at the other. Like, I feel like I met you at the big one first. Maybe as, like, you had to go over there because they were out of something at the other side. I don't know. That's that's where I remember the first time. But I definitely remember you from the mall because you would come in, not often, Mm -hmm. but I feel like even one time you were either pre-ordering or picking up. You might have even done some trade back then. I don't know if you did trades back then. I don't know. I can't recall. I probably did some trades back then. I, I, I will say I was late to the GameStop scene. I did a lot of like my I did several midnight launches at at Best Buy. Maybe that's what it was. Because yeah. I I remember I think the first big midnight launch I ever did was Modern Warfare 2 at Best Buy. Yes, uh, one of the big I ones I did that. at your store was Grand Theft Auto 4. four? It had I think four. it was. Yeah, four it was four. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was that was four. Is the first time I came to your. Uh, I think that was the first midnight launch I did at your place because it was inside the mall. Which that would have been. Yeah, I was working in the mall at that time yeah. for that one. Yeah, but, but yeah, uh, that's when I like the midnight launches is when I really started getting in going to the stores. I, for a while there, I think I just either um I, Meyer, you know, you go to the store. <laughs> you lived out. In, I lived out in Shields, so Meyer's right around the corner. Mm-hmm. I would just go there. But then when I moved out and was going to college for a little bit and then started working, I was more in the township, so I kind of gravitated more to Best Easy, Buy yeah. and things yeah, of that makes nature. Sense. Yeah. Yeah, we always, uh, it's funny to think back then, too, when we were going to GameStop, because those midnight launches back then were pretty fucking crazy. Dude, those but. were, I'm, honestly, man, I mean, I love digital. I love being able to, like, download yeah. my game, have it ready to go Just a couple days prior. up. But I do miss those midnight launch, Dude, the, the, the excitement in mm-hmm. the air. You got all the fucking nerds, all of us together talking about one common game. All spectrums, too. Oh, oh yeah. Because there was always, like, the smarty pants. Like, yeah. well, I heard that, blah, blah, blah. No, no you didn't. Oh, I mean, there Bullshit. were some hard, yeah, the hardcore guys you just kind of, right, like, right. roll your eyes at. But, like, right. I loved the midnight launches. Those were, like, Yeah, events. TV News would show up, yeah. Yeah, they were. And, and Prime's right. We would do, like, for Madden. Madden was so big at one point at the big store. Mm-hmm. We would have them wrapped around. We used to grill hot dogs at night for that. I, I, I was there for one of those. Yeah. I was there for when you guys did the hot dogs. Cause yeah. I remember I was like, man, because I, I think there was one year you guys did pizza, and another night you guys were doing hot dogs, yeah. and I was just like, man, this is turning into, like, we a used to get, cultural phenomenon. They used to give ca- yeah, they used to give us uh, petty cash for that shit. Yeah, it was great, because Aldi was right there, so we just go down to Aldi's, and, just, yeah. and Aldi's was always cheaper, but you just stock up on hot dogs and buns. we get everything we need there. So good, And we just grill. We would grill from, like, 2 to, like, fucking 10. <laughs> it was great. we just sit around and ate so many hot dogs, and then we kept them in the store, and we'd be eating hot dogs for days. We'd fire up the grill in the middle of the day, because yeah. back then we weren't really so fucking watch. You know, I don't think I ever did a... any system launches, though. I, I mean, towards I think well, I got you, a PS4. How did you get a PS4? I got it from you. That's right. <laughs> How'd you get a PS5? <laughs> I got it from you. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that's who you know. But, like, like prior to that, I was always kind of, like, you know, riding the, the luck, you know, yeah. I was running to Circuit yeah, City, and, oh, yeah. they got PS2. It was like, oh, shit, I'm going to grab one. You know, it was just... Uh, <laughs> Circuit fucking city. That was the first system I ever struggled to find was the PS2. The, uh, the PS3 was also really difficult to find as well when that first came out. Um... 
I remember uh, that was like I had just um, what was the PS3? Was that 2006, 2007? 2006. Um, I was only at my job for three years, and um, I had sent my buddy over to Best Buy. I was like, hey, man, can you go check and see if they have any PS3s? And he was like, yeah, man, I'll run over there. And this, I, I was working until 6. I haven't seen I, him since. I think, he got, I think he got over there around 5, and he was like, dude, they have a PS3. The guys, I'm, he's like, because he, you couldn't even carry it around. No. Like, the Best Buy guy had to walk around Yeah, it. yeah. And he said he can only hold it for a few minutes. And um, I remember uh, I told my manager at work, I was like, I shit my pants. I have, I have to go. Because I didn't want to just be like, I'm leaving, because it wasn't one of, those, one of those kind of jobs. I told, I was like, I <laughs> squirted and I shit my pants. I have to go. And she's like, just just go. And they definitely believed him that. Yeah, point. They, they ended up giving me something like, at the time, it was like A time or something like that. We're like, okay, you can leave. And I was like, all right, pff, I ran over asshole. to Best Buy and got my PS3, yeah. and I was super excited about it. I am not one of those people that's going to be ashamed to tell people I shit my pants. I don't care. And they're not. And there's not one manager in the world that can be like, sit down and get back to work. Yeah, they don't want to smell it's, it. It's an awkward. It's yeah. an awkward conversation. They don't want to hear it. So it's just yeah. like, go. Oh. That's like, all right, thanks. That's great. That's great. So, <laughs> well, um, so uh, so in the past, both of us um, did podcasting. Um, mm-hmm. I know we have talked about that a little bit lo- loosely as well too. Like, I was doing podcasting right around. It was 2008 ish to 2000, and then I, we stopped for a little bit and then kind of picked it up. I think 2009, 2010 ish, very light, and then. Um, it just kind of fizzled out, which was really before the podcast thing was huge. Like yeah. I had inspirations from Totally Rad Show, uh, Kevin Rose and Alex Albright. Totally Rad Show, by the way, that one of the guys that was on that is now directing, you know, movies like Prey. So, um, oh jeez, that, really? That's oh. how that's how I knew him from. Originally. Really? Yeah, that was the pod. He was with the uh, um, was Alex Albright. Um, what's his name? Um, the director? Yeah, shit, I can't think of his name. Oh, his Prey. name escapes me. Shit, shit, shit. We just talked about. Yeah, that yeah we day. just talked about this and another guy. Uh, and it was just it was just all like nerd shit, and it was really? uh, yeah it was really cool. But that that's where he got to start. Trachtenberg, Trachtenberg. Oh yeah, yeah, Daniel Trachtenberg. Um, and I also watched uh, Dignation, which was you know the the love pro that was really almost right before Reddit came out it was probably a precursor to the Reddit era. Mm-hmm. You know Dignation, where you were just giving thumbs up or the ups or whatever it was, um, downs and ups or whatever. So that was inspirational for me, and I was like, man, especially watching Tony Rad Show, I'm like, I could do this. Like I was working at GameStop, big gamer, yep. movie guy, whatever it was, and just anything pop culture-ish, you know, but that was, that was early on, you know, so, but anyways, um, that's where I got my start and interest in doing this, but you, prior to doing this for a few years, were doing something um, called Short Pause, so if yeah. you want, tell us a little bit about that. And what well, that even like. before that, um, I think we, we started doing Short Pause, and I think it was 2012, 2013, and prior to that, uh, I got, um, I can't remember the guys I met. I think I met him on Destiny, honestly. No, it was just before Destiny. It was something else. Uh, there was a guy um, asked me if I wanted, oh, we were playing, oh, we played uh, Rainbow Six Vegas. Oh, nice. Some guys that I met on Vegas. And they were like, hey, we're, we're, we're doing a podcast called Play Nation Plus. We're starting it up. And I was like, oh, okay, well, it's, I've never done a podcast before. You know, I don't know anything about it. Right. And they're like, oh, you'll be fine. So I did a couple shows with them, um, and it was a learning. It was a great learning experience. I really learned about the ins and outs of like editing a show and and things of that nature. And I was just like, I liked what they did, but I, as you know, I am super nitpicky when it comes to editing you? stuff. Yeah, right. And I learned from them. And then when I started working downtown, we had moved. Uh, we got um, surplus to another location. Uh, I met a guy I work with named Taz. And his friend Ben uh, Piccolo 930. Piccolo. Uh, they were in talks, uh, trying to figure out like they want to do a podcast about about gaming and and such. And I was just like, well, I, I've done some. I, I'd love to be a part of your guys' conversation. And so we kind of all got together and and kind of like built up the vision of what we wanted to do. And it started off with just Taz, Ben, and I, and we were doing a podcast for a little bit. And then Taz kind of more focused on working on the website because we actually had a website that, and he is just phenomenal when it comes to web hosting and, and building a site. <laughs> That's very time. I mean, Been down it, that road a couple times. Holy this guy shit. is like one of the smartest people I ever met. Like he was just really into coding and all that stuff. And so he built this he built this site for us, and we're like, all right, cool. So Ben and I started doing a podcast, and it was just him and I doing some video games right about the launch of the PS4, I think it was. Um, and then we kind of grew, we brought in Frankie and we brought in uh Bender and we had some pretty good, um, we had a pretty good run at it. Like it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was also when I realized probably halfway through that there is a lot to this 
And then when you introduce a, a kid into the into the equation, and you're spending almost an entire Sunday editing a two hour show, and it takes about eight hours. And I mean, dude, like I said, when it came yep. down when it <laughs> came down to editing, I grew, grew so anal about stuff. Like any uh, time we were talking, and you said um or uh, yeah, I'm slicing it out. Because I don't like ums and uhs. And I try, I know, I still do it all the time when we do it on our show. I'll hear it. I'm just like, God damn it. Right. Drives me nuts. But you imagine slicing out a two and a half hour show, taking out uhs and ums, adding audio or music from a game that you're talking about because you want to have a little something in the background. Like, just had this really elaborate vision of what I want to do. And I'm sure I probably could have found an easier way of editing. Right. But I mean, I went into Final Cut Pro knowing nothing about it. I was like, I'm just going to have to self taught. That's reading same, stuff, same. and I mean, I still don't know all the ins and outs of Final Cut Pro, no. and I don't know how to be efficient. I just know my way of doing stuff. Yeah. And unfortunately, you know, when it, when it was with short pause, it just it became very taxing. Yeah. And I love those guys. I mean, I had a great time with them, and our shows were, I thought they were well produced. Uh, they were, we, we had a, a pretty decent audience. Um, we started off just a podcast, and then we moved it to. Uh, videoed on YouTube and then yeah. extracted it and kept the podcast going. Yeah, I know. It was quite an opera. I mean, I used to stop in once in a while because you guys did on Saturday nights a lot, it seemed like. Yeah, a lot of them were Saturday nights. Yeah, yeah, I remember yep. stopping. And, and Piccolo, shout out Piccolo. I haven't seen you in a long time. <laughs> I, I miss playing games. He's got me back into Destiny 2. We're currently going to. Uh, I know, I know. Whoa, I know. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> time out. <laughs> Fucking what? Yeah. He, you, is that is that where you're going to reveal that information is right here? What the I'm f- doing it very. Serious? I'm doing it very. Oh uh, my god. Subtle. We're, 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 we we started up Beyond Light because oh I, that was that was the expansion that I, that I, I dropped out before. And he was like, "Hey, man, this new, uh, oh, this new." Oh um, my god! <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know. Everybody's freaking out. Yeah, like he, uh, he um, wow. messaged me and he was like, "Hey, man, this Final Shape uh, storyline is getting a lot of uh, rave reviews." And I was just like, "Dude, I, Jesus I, Christ. dude, I did so good. I went like a, I think I was almost two years without, or maybe a year and a half without even touching Destiny." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, "All right, man." Well, I got fucking wagon, everybody. Uh, and I was reading people, and I heard it wasn't too long. And I was like, "Well, look, man, I've yeah. spent ten years playing this game." Yeah, that's true. I owe it to myself to see where they finish it. So we're just doing, like, I'm not getting caught up in the Crucible right. and raids and all that stuff. I just want the story. So we're doing Beyond Light. We're almost done with Beyond Light. Then we're going to start Final Shape, and then I'm going to step away. Right. I just, I mean, we're this close. Yeah. You know, I want to see what what happens. I mean, for Christ's sakes, I'm sitting there watching videos, and I see uh, I see Zavala, or, or not sorry, I'm sorry, I see Cade 6 is back. I'm like... The fuck? What? What is I mean, Cade? What is, what is Cade doing back? I mean, it is Cade. It's pretty yeah, cool. I mean, it's Cade. But I was just like, man, there's been just so many yeah, changes. Plus, yeah. you know, obviously with the pa- passing of Lance Reddick, uh, R.I.P. And but they do have Keith David doing the voices of Allah now, which is a good fucking That's replacement. That's a fine choice, Jesus Christ, right? Yeah. So yeah, I, it, Piccolo did his thing where he just kind of started chirping in my ear, and yeah, you know, he's, and I was like, Pic- all right, dude. So, so he, okay, so he's the fucking drug dealer now. Got gotcha. you. <laughs> good to know. Good to know. Hey, thanks for that uh, follow out there, uh, Miss uh, Cosmic Bunny. We've got a couple things I do want to say. So, uh, Tricky uh, did say um, that he's just going to lurk. Hey, we appreciate you stopping in, Trick. Um, I do plan on getting him. He's another one or two I want to have a conversation oh, yeah. with as well, too. I want, I want Tricky um, in here. You know, Trick's, uh, Trick's got some good stuff to talk about as well, too. So, uh, he had, d- dude definitely, definitely <laughs> reads the Playboy <laughs> articles. That's his favorite part. Um, but, uh, so, I do want, and kind of to pivot, but still in the same, I do want to say, um, Brian, who is um, part of our community, he came from came from short, short pause, yeah, yeah originally. Because yeah. I remember he, I remember him from the chat. Oh yeah, yeah. I Brian, Brian has chat. been uh, I've, I've, Brian's been around for as long as I can remember. Yeah. Like Brian's just he's one of those guys that is just he's so over the top with some yeah. things, and yeah. th- he shows no chill when he wants to get naughty. Yeah, it's great. Uh, but I, the thing I love about Brian is he's just he's an, he's as honest as they come. There's no filter. There's no mm. bullshit. It, what you hear and what right. you see is what you get, and uh, he is tap Captain, Captain Team, Team Kill. Kill. Yep, uh, he's yep. he's very sus when it comes to Hell Divers too. But Brian's been around for a long time, and I've always just appreciated his yeah. perspective. And th- th- that's one of the main reasons why I love doing podcasts and mm-hmm. talk shows. Because when you do connect with people like Brian yeah. or like even Tricky, you know, I work with Trick, but Trick kind of turned on to the show, and he likes being there, and he's he's always sharing his perspective. He comes up with a lot of great ideas. Him and Cuddles Dude, have come up with some great ideas you, for us. Fact, and, 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 you know, we play games, you know, trick i met during the pandemic we were still i we might have been still on mixer or twitch i don't remember but predators drop that's how i met yep. him 
and he was just and he's always of course he's busy these days but he's always been a consistent like yeah. hey we're gonna play games you want to play or want to be involved in x and he's always down like he's always going to be one of those guys that you like that's my player yeah. number two kind of guy you know so no i just and that's you know it's it's guys like brian that just it makes me feel good that you know there's people out there that who i can talk to that they understand where I'm coming from on things, and they'll share where they're coming from on yeah, things and their perspective. And yeah. that's th- that's always been the thing about podcasting, like is getting the perspectives, yeah. you know, and hearing from other people what they think about something. Uh, it's Brian is just one of many that I've just really learned yeah, to appreciate these because it's just awesome to see them yeah, continue you, this journey with us. Continue, yeah, to continue uh, supporting you through the you know, all these years. That's great. We appreciate that. Um, but uh, so you know. That said, we've definitely, uh, again, you know, we've been doing this content for a little bit as well, too, as we've kind of talked about. Um, you know, we both started with the game streaming, um, you know, or whatever. But what have you learned specifically, you know, from Short Paws? Like, like maybe mm-hmm. a few do's, a couple do's and don'ts that you've learned from Short Paws that you've, you know, either learned or integrated, like with Vanderbab, like, I'm not doing that with this one. You know? Right. Um, the, the the first thing is just not uh, well obviously the editing process. Uh, now when I edit our shows, there is no editing. That's one thing. That's one transition we made with short pause that I felt really benefited going forward with this is we just did our show live. When we did our show originally with short pause, we recorded it. Right. And so we would stop, check our notes, and then continue with the conversation and make sure we were informing people with the correct information. Um, and so like. I would have like a three hour video that I would have to chop down to oh, like a, yeah, two yeah, hours. Right, right, yeah. That, which which is, takes a, a, it's fuck a lot of, of time. fucking work. Yeah, yeah. But once we went live, and I was like, okay, look, we go live. We don't have the option of stopping to check notes. So we, we made a point to like, look, we need to make sure we're well versed on what we're talking about because there is no taking a break. Right. And so I knew once we started getting the hang of that, I was like, okay, this is how I re- much rather do things because I don't have to fucking edit all day. I don't have to edit anything right. anymore. Take up all your Sundays. That, yeah. yeah, my Sundays are, and I had to. I had that was a change I had to make because of having kids. I can't spend a whole Sunday downstairs for eight hours editing stuff. But then going back to like the other thing I learned from short pause is when we got to this it was like, and, and and this is why I was so happy to do this with you because you understood it right away. I was like, dude, I don't want to talk about every single topic in gaming. I don't want to talk about every single news article or game announcement or anything or in a movie or TV show or anything. I just want to talk about the things that I find interesting. Right. And you, the things that you find interesting. Mm-hmm. And by doing that, we don't have to have, like, with short pause, and again, this was, and I know there were people that, that appreciate it because I always saw it in the comments, but, like, we would go in there and we would have 15 topics. We're going to address this story that broke. And, like... I, it might be something that I'm familiar with or I'm interested in, but I can already tell one of the other guys, maybe they a couple of the other guys, they're not into it, so they're not going to be able to like offer that. too oh. much perspective. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. it's just like, okay, this segment probably could have been avoided right. because we're just not – and I get it. The point of it was to inform people, but at the same time, I wanted more of what we have, like that conversation mm-hmm. where we're, we don't have – because if you have 15 topics and you have a conversation about all of them, you're looking at a five-hour show. Jesus, yeah, that would be, and then then you're back to your editing. Yeah, and well, then too. my, yeah, now editing takes two days. Yeah. And it's just like, I want something that's a little bit more focused on the things that I'm into, the things that you're into, because I think they al- we mostly align in stuff. Like wrestling stuff, I'm still kind of getting up to up to speed on that yeah, stuff. We're working on it. I'm, I'm getting into it more Slowly because of something you're into, and I do, I was into it when I was younger, so that's why it's just easing, it's kind of like riding a bike. You just get back into it, get familiar with the new storylines, right. the, new, the new characters, yeah. or or what have you, and it's just like, okay, this is something I can get back into. Who's your favorite wrestler? Oh, Rohit. Good answer. Who's yeah. your, as a kid growing up, who's your favorite wrestler? Uh, dude, I mean, obviously Ultimate Warrior was awesome. I love the Bushwhackers. I love the tag I team. Feel, I feel like you do, you, yeah, Bushwhackers is probably. But if I had to go with one, it, 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 and Undertaker. I thought Undertaker was, yeah. I, I bought into the gimmick right away. I was Fuck, like, this yeah. is fucking dope. But like, ult, like Ultimate Warrior was was probably, you know, the dope-ass one yeah, that yeah. I really got into. Yeah, because, well, I mean, you love taking toots, too, and he was always coked up. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. Hey, man, sense. to be the warrior, you got to have that energy. I get it. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. So, Jake the Snake, that's a, that's a good that's choice, a, Yeah, too. that's always been his as, uh, as well, too. So, um, well, awesome. So, uh, you know, I, you know, speaking kind of gaming and different things that you like and stuff like that, and clearly, you know, Short Paws is big about that as well, too. But, like, um, you've talked about, you know, sports, you know, because growing up, sports was kind of a hobby. Oh. You were a hobby, but you were also into sports as well, too. But um, would you say as far as uh, gaming, like in the 90s era, because I feel like 
I hear more like the disc era from you. Did you really play like the the old retro stuff, or did that kind of bloom later? To be honest with you, man, I remember playing Mario and I, oh god, Jaws Jaws of Revenge was actually a good game compared to the movie. The movie was <laughs> fucking terrible. The sure, game was yeah. actually good, but no, I did play a lot of that stuff. I did play Mario's. I did play the Metroids. I did okay. play um, Rygar was a game I remember the most because Rygar kicked the shit out of me. And that yeah, was like my that was like yeah, my yeah. Dark Souls wow. game growing up was yeah. Rygar. Oh Jesus. Uh, but like, I, but I mean, even those when I played on the Nintendo and things like that, always sports up. Baseball, you know, remember baseball oh, okay. came out. I think there was Ten Yard Fight. There was Blades of Steel. So my brother and I were always locking horns in that. But like, you know, I did the tr- like the the big ten pole ones. Mario, I played the fuck out of those. Okay. Mario, one, two, and three. Um, you know, I, I the one that one I never got into, and I think that's why I don't get into it now, was, was Zelda. I never played a whole lot of Zelda games growing up. And I think that's one of the reason why when I play Breath of the Wild, I'm just like, you know, I'm more interested in the Mario <laughs> right, games, right, right, the Metroid right, games, right. and things of that nature. But I did play, but again, it always was mostly sports stuff. Uh, that because I always play with my brother and my friends, would always lock horns on that. Okay, that kind of. I mean, I I, I guess I can say because I feel like we just don't. Like, when we talk, like, retro, like, I feel I do it way more than you comparatively, mm-hmm. and I, I feel like I hold on to a lot of those. I'm not, like, there's people out there that that's their shtick, is retro yeah. gamings and stuff like that. I, there's a guy I um, watch on uh, Facebook Reels for the last year or two, and mm-hmm. he, he was hard for me to watch after at first, but, like, I started to get into the one. I started, like, really paying attention to what he was doing in his bits and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, this is actually kind of cool, because sometimes I feel like if somebody worked at GameStop, they also had to focus on new stuff. Yeah. The retro things would always be, like, this weird like dynamic of conversation yeah because some people just like won't move from that hill like this is the greatest era and yeah. there's nothing better ever since i'm like okay bro everything looks like a movie now are you getting see and, that, and i think that's part of where i'm at i'm not the type of guy who really sticks around in the past yeah and, and, and i mean like i pl- i know i played it up but i mean also uh, tone to be honest with you, i just really don't remember a lot of it back in the that's day that's fair too yeah. you know and i always did i always moved with the generations right. you know so like when we moved on from the nes super nintendo oh fucking awesome games and you had there. both of them I had all of them. I mean, okay, okay, I, I, okay. Went, I went Nintendo, I went Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, PlayStation. Okay, so I damn. Mean, I went through all, I went through all I but I mean, that. I don't get hung up on retro stuff. I don't get hung up on old stuff. Like, right. I talk about SOCOM all the time. But if I were to go back right now and right. play SOCOM 2 right now, five minutes of nostalgia cool, after that I'd be like, Jesus Christ, this place is terrible. Yeah, but, so that, that's actually, I'm glad you brought that up, because... Was that, would you say, like the major gaming trick? Because in the 90s, you played games, but you might not have considered yourself a gamer. Do you mm-hmm. feel like SOCOM 2 is what really was the turning point for you? Like, no, I'm a fucking gamer, <laughs> and this is serious. And I, would say, I wouldn't say it was SOCOM 2. I would say it's online gaming. Just online I, I gaming? I think online. Because I mean, you play before, online before that? Nothing. I, I, was, I didn't oh, do a so whole lot of online. The online part once of that. the online oh, came okay, out, because once online came out for SOCOM 2, I think shortly after a couple years, we had Madden online, and then we had college football online, and then I was just like, like the comp- again, you go back. It all comes yeah. back to that competitive nature. Like I can sit there and play a single player game. You know that. I'll fucking go back and play a lot of stuff. And I played a lot of stuff growing up. Yeah. But the things that I always remember is the competitive side, the side the, where I'm locking horns with my brother or my friends, whether it's online or in person. Yeah. GoldenEye was another game that I played a ton of, but that's because it was competitive. I didn't play the fucking single player. I mean, I did, but I always did the competitive. My brother would play, my cousins yeah. would come over, my friends would come so over. You guys were, yeah, yeah. So yeah. When, when when SOCOM came out, that was like the first online game I ever played, yeah. and then that's where like I got invested in online gaming, and that's where I feel like for a long time. That's probably why I stepped away from a lot of single player stuff because I was always playing online. Destiny too. Destiny, Destiny played a big part of me missing a lot of games. But no, I, I, but the other part is again, I just I am not somebody who gets hung up on retro stuff. When people talk, when publishers, Microsoft and stuff talk about backwards compatibility, mm-hmm. doesn't do anything for right, me. Right. Yes. I'm, I I'm have no same. interest in going back. I, I I have better memories of those games when I played them than I do. A better experience than when I go and play them now. Right. Because I'm just like, this is old. Like, even Rainbow Six Vegas. Love oh, it. God, it's so go good. back and play it now. The control scheme, you're just like... Oh. Yeah, it's, it's tough sometimes. No. Yeah, I know. And they're actually... Uh, speaking of which, uh, there's a game coming out... Uh, Bounty Hunter, which is the Star Wars Bounty yes, Hunter, I've seen which that. they're redoing all that, and I'm hoping they're redoing the controls, modernizing. They have to be because I tried to God, play that. So. That they they basically released the PS2 port on the the PlayStation yes. a couple years back. Yep. And it's fucking awful to play. <laughs> it really and I was is, like man. so excited to play it, but it's fucking awful. But, but I do feel like there's this weird thing where if like you don't talk about retro gaming, you're not a real gamer. I'm just like, dude, I probably put more hours in some games than you have in which your is, retro games. I mean, and that drives me nuts. That's sure. that fucking that's that elitist mentality sometimes, and I'm just yeah. like. 
It can't Look, be. Look, I played retro games. I just don't to retro games. Yeah, I, get I can't. It. It's not me. But I mean, I understand everyone's different. Yeah. But I hate it when people sometimes try to play the whole like, oh, you don't really do retro. I'm just like, I I had my time with those games. Right, and that's that's kind of why I wanted to ask because it just seemed like that you we don't really ever talk about that. So I I thought and I didn't know if maybe you became a later gamer. And it's for me like as you see behind me like. I might not play the retro games, but like Super Nintendo is still probably my favorite yeah, console of all time. There's some great games outside, honestly, the PS4 at that point because of all the gaming that really yeah. kind of you know blown up out of that. But yeah, like the retro games, the Super Nintendo era is great, but I don't necessarily go back and play them either. Yeah. But I just I love them and like basically build shrines to them at this point. I so. have great memories. Yeah, that's crazy. See, I, I didn't know. That's I didn't really I'm, know. I guess that's so, why yeah, I'm yeah, stay there. But like, yeah, I mean. There's a lot of games. Again, I don't remember them. Yeah. I mean, I know I had a stack of NES games, but I couldn't go through in my mind which ones I had. Sure. That, that's fair. That's you know, fair. but I just I do remember Rygar because Rygar fuck with me. Rygar was the one time where I was just like, is this supposed to be fun? Is gaming right. supposed two to be fun? Two little fucking bars of health, I think, or something <laughs> like that. Like one or two hits, like, and you this, had to, you were back. Yeah, I fuck thought this that is game. supposed to be no, fun. This no. is not fun. I could talk a whole episode about coin op gaming and how that <laughs> changed into. In, that's why Nintendo games were so hard was because they came everybody that designed games yep. came out of coin up. Yep. So the mentality was that kind of uh, that kind of challenging because you would throw another quarter another in. Another quarter in, yeah. So when fucking, you don't have that when you're playing yeah, on a console. That's part of the reason why I don't get too hard on fucking uh, <laughs> games like that. But so um from it kind of still in that perspective. So from you know our youth when we were growing up, like as somebody like um myself who um felt like that sometimes there was pressure in hiding the nerdum, did you feel like you had oh, to hide yeah. some of your nerdum uh, growing up in the nineties? Again, up uh, uh, probably. Uh, see, I got lucky. Um, I, I I was so into sports, and I was pretty good at sports. Sure. So I, I had like friends and stuff that were all like, and once I kind of showed them I was in the games, they were like, "Oh, I'm into it too." So I mean, when you're like popular through sports, yeah. and you have friends everywhere and focusing stuff. here and then but then yeah. but then you kind of find that way to connect with them like oh you, you have a nerdy side too mm-hmm. you didn't have to really hide it from anybody right you know what i'm saying i mean yeah. i mean there was there was the stigma was still there just generally speaking right but i never ever felt like oh i can't tell anyone no, when it came to girls i was like i don't play games you know when i was younger yeah yeah yeah. Was that kind uh, of thing, but yeah. my wife when she realized it she was like oh yeah you play video games i'm like yeah and she's like are you ever going to stop? And I was like, probably not. And she was like, fine, you know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, I never <laughs> ever felt like, um, not so much with games, I think more so movies. Yeah. Like, like, like if I told people I was into Star Wars, I would get a weird look sometimes. And I was just like, how, how do you not like Star Wars? I mean, I grew up, I watch this shit all the time. And the movies, I'm like, that, that's totally me. Indiana Jones, Raider of the Lost Ark. Well, that's kind of nerdy. I'm like, fucking Indiana Jones. Like, are you kidding me? Like, I felt like I had to defend myself more for movies no shit. than I did video games. Oh, yeah. That, that's weird to me. See, like, I, I feel like I uh, I had to hide a lot. Of, well, I grew up in a small school, which mm-hmm. you wouldn't think would be that big of a deal, but sure. it did because that mean you had direct ties to all the bullies, the, the preps. Yeah, or yeah. The sport. I was I was a chubby kid, so I didn't play sports. I had asthma. You know, mm-hmm. it, wasn't, it wasn't neither of those things were going to work out for me. It just never did. Um, I was into the stuff. You know, I enjoyed them, especially basketball, you know, but uh, I felt like um, I was fortunate early on that I didn't, because you did have to hide some of that stuff. Yeah. But after a while, for me at least, and that's good that you felt like you could do that. But do you felt like okay, so you had to hide some of that stuff? Now, let me let me let me let me say that. Yeah. Before, I don't mean to cut you off, yeah. but like I feel like that, that's a good point, and, and I want to like clarify something too. Make don't forget when I played these games in the '90s, a lot more sports games. So like it's easy for me for me to sit there and say I'm playing 99 oh, yeah, sports. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm playing. I'm playing uh, game day. You know, but because I didn't play right. a lot of Final Fantasy. You know, if I were to go around and tell people I play Final Fantasy, yeah, I'm because sh- I, I saw what other people no, did when they, when they said, "Oh, yeah. Final Fantasy." Give that fucker a swirly. Yeah, that sounds yeah. fucking. Late. But I but I yeah. never played. But I never trash people who played it because like I'm playing video games. I'm, I mean, I yeah, might be yeah. a prick, but I'm not You're ignorant. Like I, I can understand that. Yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah. It, I think it really depends on the genre of games that you're okay. into. That's fair. You know, because like I said, I play a lot of sports, and no one's gonna make fun of you if you're kicking ass at Gold Nine. No one's gonna ki- make fun of you if you're whooping right. ass at NBA Live. Right. You know, but if you sit there and go around, there was that weird stigma about Final Fantasy, which I never understood because, like, you know, I just, I think, and matter of fact, I think I played a couple of those games. I just never saw them through because I was like, my brother's like, hey, let's play this, let's play NBA Live. So I never got the time to like, because you know, yeah. you get school and things of that nature. Plus you had to read. Oof, yeah, that's that was the worst part. <laughs> 
<laughs> would you? So let me uh, just. Would you? If you could go back in time, is there anything you'd change about that at this point, or no? I, I probably would have tried to make more time for single player stuff. Okay. You know, because like, because I mean, but I mean, I didn't mind it because I love playing with my friends, and I think that's why when mm-hmm. online gaming came around, it was just like, oh my god, this can happen all the time now, not right. just when my friends come over. Right. But I do wish, you know, I would have made more time for the single player stuff because I know there's a lot of great stories that I missed out there. Yeah. 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 I. I, I I think that uh, uh, shit, shit, even for me, like I, I think I put so much time into Final Fantasy three, I missed out on a lot of other Super Nintendo games that were great in that area. Right. I just couldn't stop playing it. I mean, I, I literally put hundreds of hours in the game. I stopped the clock on my cartridge at one point. <laughs> like, I just, really? I just couldn't stop playing it. Wow. I would, and it was just, I had two saves, and it was the main save. I would just grind and grind and grind, and then maybe go to this area. Anyways, I could talk about that forever, but. Um, it, you know, I definitely think that I, I, I would change at least that as like what I was getting my hands on to uh, mm-hmm. as well. Cause I play a little bit of everything, but that definitely took up a lot of my time. And I was fortunate, like when I discovered like D and D and magic and D and D was still part, you know, you were still coming out of like satanic panic it was only a few yeah. years out of that, you know, that kind of gaming at least allowed me to wear that on the sleeve. And I feel like I had to hide a lot of that for at least till I was about 14. I think mm-hmm. when I started playing D and D and then I felt like at that point, as odd as it is, something like D and D brought confidence in me of yeah. who I am as a person, even how I am now because, like, I was more in a shell and not I was more afraid to be myself. Well, for some reason, playing D&D, and maybe it was because some of the guys I played with were a few years older, I just felt like I had this interesting connection that there was a bigger world out there. Yeah, you and know? I feel that probably makes it easier when you kind of break out of your shell through a character, you know, and kind yeah. of imbue your personality into that character. Yeah. And you're like, oh, man, this is actually kind of fun. You get right. more confident with it, yep. and then when you go out there. I would say that's probably the one style of gaming that I played when I was younger, but I, it wasn't like a major part was board gaming. Yeah. I never, I mean, I did the usual shoots and ladders, a little bit of Monopoly, you know, things that growing Candy up. Land. Candy, that Candy, Candy Land. Land. I still play it with my kids. Right. Uh, but, like, you know, some of the deeper stuff, I never get Risk. I, I can't play it. My oh, brother would be like, you want to play Risk? And fucking it just fist fights over that <laughs> fucking game. Are you kidding my brother me? wanted it just to make me feel stupid. And I was like, okay, well played, Yeah, sir. yeah. That, so he's, he's de- so your brother is definitely, like, way into, like, strict. Because he plays Civ. He does and, Civ. And he does some City. And he's an instigator, of course, too. He's a, he's a big time instigator. No, but he loves all that that strategery yeah. and all that stuff. And he, and he does board games and stuff like that. Like, I would love to find time. Like, I'm hoping one of these nights you'll do a board game with your camera. Yeah, I would like to. I would love to get involved with something should, like that. We need to get him involved at some point as well, too. Dude, he, he, he loves his love board games. Um, he's just, he, I mean, he's one of those guys where he's just so nonstop. Like, he... he has to do Civ on his laptop in between cases or if he's working on stuff. He has no time to like sit down and, and, and play games. That's like epic. I'm I'm much respect struggling to try to get him to, uh, to commit to college football. And that's something he fucking loved. Yeah, so he's str- he's he's not sure if he's gonna commit to it? He, he I think he will. I think he's just trying to make sure that he has a time for it. Yeah, that's fair. But he but the other thing is he has to um he has to justify going on my PS five. He doesn't have a PS five yet. What a bum. <laughs> yeah, right, know. right. So back to the games for a minute. So um, what would you feel like is a game that's so important, so addictive maybe even, that it had you at one point telling both your now wife, Melissa, and your parents that you were at the opposite places on Christmas <laughs> to play a video game more than hanging out with friends and family or maybe a girlfriend? That was, uh, that was a strategy in my mind that I thought was going to work, and it would have. Um, was, she's referring to, to she's the, referring to Christmas. Dog. She's referring to Christmas. Okay. And this is probably about, and I'd say it's probably about two years after we started dating. And um, like, look, I, I'm Catholic. I had a Catholic wedding, but I'm a lapsed Catholic. I don't. I'm not at church every Sunday. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't remember the last time. I've, I think the last time I went to church was when I got married. Yeah. Um, but those Catholic weddings are so long, too. The, the, it was the Christmas Mass, and I was just like, dude, that's like two hours. And I think I had just picked up the latest Madden, and I was like, I'm going to go home and play. I want to play Madden. I, just, I don't want to do anything. You know what so, year? Circa what year? Uh, I think it was 03. So I was uh, Joey Harrington was on the cover of that one, I think. Oh, shit. We got a Joey Harrington drop. I think he was on the cover. So yeah, it was so Oregon. About 2003. Yeah. So. 2003-ish. Okay. And so we, uh, I get Madden. And I was like, you know, I don't want to go to Mass tonight. You know, Melissa's asking me to go with her family. My mom wants me to go with her. And I was just like, I got an idea. So I called my mom. I'm like, hey, 
I'm going to Christmas Mass with Melissa's parents, um, and I'll just see you guys tomorrow. She's like, oh, that's fine. That's great. And so I call Melissa, and I'm like, hey, I'm going to go to Mass with my parents, because so, different churches, and I don't worry about them meeting up or anything. Sure. And so I'm like, all right, great, cool. Have, you know, have fun. I'll see you tomorrow. And so I go back. At the time, I was living at Country Ridge, and I, I get back there, and I'm firing up, and I'm just like, perfect christmas eve just just chilling playing games and i'll and i'll meet up with with melissa later and probably about oh man i want to say it was around seven o'clock uh <laughs> melissa texts me and she's like hey what are you doing i'm like oh, i'm just uh i'm just with my parents <laughs> and uh she goes oh really she goes because i just called your parents house and talked to your dad and he said you're with me and i was like fuck i'm like come do I had it planned out? Like, there has never been a time where she would call my parents looking for me. Except for Christmas. Except for Matt. Christmas Eve. She calls there afterwards, oh, and they were like, no, man. I thought he was with you. And, like, I'm at home playing what? Madden, and that, dude, that backfired so what bad. What a fucking scumbag. Now, who was mad more, your parents or her? Or did they, were oh, they all just like, oh, that's, that's fucking Brett. <laughs> Melissa was probably more dis. I don't want to say she was mad, but she was like, you're a piece of shit. And I was like, all right. My dad was just like. That, that tracks. Yeah, he's like a chip <laughs> off the old block. <laughs> yeah, that's all he does is play video yeah. games, so that makes total great, sense. But, great. man, what a, just a, a disastrous. Man, still uh, fucking <laughs> put a ring on it. That's crazy. Prime says, I would have lied and said I'm cheating on you. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. So, uh, that's great. No, I I, I was uh, uh, just kind of curious the kind of game that would really make you do it. Was, that, but it, was, I, it, I was just, it wasn't so much the game. It was just like, I don't want to go. I don't want to do this I know. Tonight. It's, I, I figured that was literally I'm pretty sure I got the loaded answer. the night before because friends were back in town. Yeah, oh, yeah. So yeah. I probably got loaded. I was just like, yeah. I don't feel like doing church right. today. You might be a piece of shit. So, uh, great. I appreciate that uh, share <laughs> there. Uh, so we consider ourselves, I feel like, amateur foodies. I think I use that term loosely. But, I think it's accurate. Uh, yeah. And in, in the last few years, though, you started smoking. What kind of got you into that originally? Now, that was just a gift, or was that something you were curious about? Like, how did that trigger start? Uh, like, like obviously seeing other friends smoking, but honestly, man, for me, it was just, I love the smell of it. I wanted that smell. Like I can do. Yeah, I can. La- yeah. I could have launched a, a grill with with charcoal and and wood and, and or gas. And I mean, the smell of food on a, on a grill is fine. I I I needed the smell of applewood or hickory yeah, yeah, or yeah. something smoking. Plus, I love I love smoked food. I love you yeah. know the tenderness of the meat. So I mean, I wanted to start doing that stuff. Plus. I felt like I had a pretty good gri- uh, gri- grasp on the grill. I yeah. knew how to fry stuff. I was like, I, I want to kind of start smoking food. What's your favorite meat? Like uh, to uh, smoke? Not necessarily that you made, but like, what is your favorite like smoked meat? You, uh, have a smoked meat? you know, I haven't done it yet, but a brisket. That's the uh, best. I, I, the that, best. I do brisket is so intimidating because first Man. of all, it's expensive. Like if you want to go out and get a brisket, you're looking at ninety plus. Like it's expensive to do brisket. Jeez. So like you're like, I don't want to fuck it up. Because yeah. it's a waste of money, but at the same time, I don't want to fuck it up and disappoint everyone who's like, how do you fuck up brisket? <laughs> it's yeah. just, I mean, every time I see a video of how to cook brisket, it looks so simple. Yeah. Like, you put it in here, let it sit for yeah. X amount of hours, don't do anything crazy, wrap it up, and you're done. Mm-hmm. In my mind, it's like, I'm going to fuck all this up. <laughs> you know, but, but brisket is probably my, is, is the one I, favorite one I've eaten. Right. Uh, in terms of smoking, I feel like I'm starting to get a really good, um, a good feel for a pulled pork. Like yeah. I'm, yeah. I was going to say, what's the, is that the, is that the one you're right now? You're feeling like, man, I got this down. That's probably the one where I'm most confident now. Cool. I can throw one of those on and, and ribs are a very close second, if not tied. Like I've got, I think you I've got ribs. Uh, I, you know, here's the thing, like. When it comes to pork or like a pork butt, I want to be able to reach in there and pull the bone out. Yeah. I lo- dude, that's my favorite thing about doing a shoulder is like when you sit there and you have it there and you're yeah. like, okay, I see the bone, and you can literally grab that bone and just you're just like, okay, that's sexy. Because I know when I shred it, it's gonna be easy right. peasy. When it comes to ribs, I don't like it when it's fall off the bone, like literally fall off the bone. I do like when you have to like take a bite of it, but then it falls off. So the, the, it, there is kind of a, a balancing act because mm-hmm. if you do it a certain way. Like, literally, when you look it up, the bone will fall. I don't like it super messy. That's what a pork shoulder is for. That's what pulled pork is for. For ribs, I want to be able to bite it off the yeah, bone. Okay, now, okay. when I bite into it, if I start doing, like, corn on the cob to catch everything falling off, that's okay. Yeah, that's okay, yeah. But yeah. I want to I I work for it, get that bite into it. Yeah, okay. But ribs are probably right there. And then, like, cream cheese is fun to do, too. Yeah, I was going to say, you're, you're definitely into that cream cheese thing. Uh, uh, I, I've yet to try it. 
the smoked cream cheese thing. Dude, I, I'm, I'm going to do you got, one. You're going to have to, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to do one at some point there. So what do you, like, where do you figure, in your in your journey of being a smoker, where do you feel like you are? Are you, like, a, still kind of, like, learning a beginner? Oh, yeah. or I'm like, you're, you're not even mid yet. You feel like you're just Yeah, kind of, I feel like I'm okay. still just a guy who's still, still trying to learn how to, how to pr- perfect it, you know? And, and the thing is, man, I think when it comes to, like, anything cooking, it's all subjective. Like, what sure. is, like, my ideal ribs are not going to be somebody else's ideal ribs, yeah, yeah. which is, like, what I want to make, but I also want to make ribs where you or somebody else takes by and like, man, these are really good ribs. Like the fucking Cuban you made? Like that? Like, <laughs> god damn. I just want to make, but again, that's what's so difficult about cooking for people in general is it's, <laughs> it is subjective. Sure. And so, like, I know when I ask one person, what do you think of the ribs? And they're like, oh, they're really good. And I ask the next person, they could be like, man, they're okay. Right. But then it's just like, you can't get pissed about that because you're just like, oh, fuck. You gotta, because you're yeah, never going to make the perfect rip. Right, right, right. Some people love it when they fall off the bone. Some people like to work on them a little bit. And it's just like, I just got to do what I like right. and hope it appeases most of them. Right, there you go. And what do you think is like, if you could think of one singular thing that was a game changer into your journey in this, like whether it was like using a certain vinegar or certain this, like was there something that was like a game changer where like you went from like I just started smoking to like, oh, I just moved up a level a little oh, bit? Uh, I think the one thing that I learned about smoking that kind of carried over to a lot of my cooking, not just like smoking it, but also grilling and or, or anything, is resting your food. Let I, it, I, marinate a little bit or something? No, when, after, after you mar- I mean, this is after you cook it. Like after you cook oh, it, wrap right. it, it up. It still cooks itself, right? Yeah, it like if, like or, or like if especially if it's like a meat, like there's a lot of juices there. If you let it rest, the juices kind of like reincorporates into the meat. Like Excuse you know me. when you have like a, a oh, steak you yeah. put it on the plate and it gets all the juices really everywhere. The air this way, he traps it in there, and then you it put it in there, and it kind of oh, reincorporates back into it. And dude, when, when you do that, fucking science, it is, and you cut into it, it's so much juicier and so much more tender. Oh yeah. So like yeah. when I, I I never rested any of my food, and this again, I am not a fucking professional cook, so I didn't know anything. I, I well, cook a hot hamburger on the on the grill. Chubby, we just want to eat it. Yeah, put it on the grill, yeah, throw yeah. it on the plate, we're good to go. Yeah. But like a lot of stuff, man, it makes chicken, beef, pork, anything. Resting you your food, like when I do ribs. Or when I do a pork butt tone, I have it wrapped up, and I put it in the cooler for, like, almost two hours. Two hours? Dude, and the thing is, when you bring it out, it is it's still piping yeah, hot. Yeah, yeah, it's hot. So cooler. you have it wrapped, and you put towels over it, and you put it Man, in the cooler. Okay. But in that two hours, everything is reabsorbing back into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, you'll still open it. I mean, it's steaming, and it's still hot, and, but it's so much tender. That yeah. is, like, anytime you cook anything, even if it's in the oven, rest it. I wasn't, my stomach wasn't growling until you <laughs> That's just, our, yeah, until you just explained hard. that entire thing, yeah. <laughs> and, and we've had Drafton made his uh, brisket, and he's the first person in a long time that I personally had known and been around, like, hanging out and, like, made a brisket. He made one, like, last year, and it was, like, mm-hmm. and he was trimming all, all the fat off of me and half fat. It's like, what are you doing? We're eating, like, like the, the brisket fat like it's candy because we're, you know. But, I mean, you can, though. If you cook it right, it's, it's and good. It, was good. it yeah, melts. He just, he just it doesn't melts. like it. He doesn't like it. So he doesn't like the fat. I don't know. He's what? you know he's a weirdo. So yeah, he is a weirdo. All right. So here's uh, uh everybody so far that, that has tested that this is a lot to uh, uh ask numerically, but I don't agree. I think like there's just so many things out there. It can tell a lot about a person, especially if you get into either sides or anything. But let's say tomorrow we find out there's a cataclysmic event that's blowing the earth up. Oh man. And you're getting one last meal. You can choose five items. Two drinks. What are your items? Five. A lot of people do like three things. Uh, uh-uh, uh, we ain't fucking around full like that. The, the Earth never exists at, after at this point. So let let let's full Buffalo this. Uh, that that's probably gonna be one thing. I want some wings on my plate. Okay, so we got wings. That's I one. want some wings on my plate. I want a good uh, corn on the cob. I need a nice big corn. Earth is exploding. This guy wants corn on the cob. Dude, I, lo- dude, I love it. Especially when you, when you grill it, and yeah. then you have it covered in butter, and you have seasoning on it. Yeah. Melissa does a lot of old bay on her corn. Yeah, she That's does. fucking She's awesome. She's the wiser of the two. So wings, corn, and yeah. I will go right back to it. I want a burger. Okay. I want a burger with uh, grilled onions, Swiss cheese, mayo mustard, on a brioche bun. Big ass burger. how to build a burger. Um, I want... Kogel's Vienna. That's four, okay. With mustard and onions. Mm, God, maybe some... Co- uh, any Coney? Uh, nope. You just want to go... Mustard and okay, okay. onions, Respect man. Like it, I, I, I'm, I, I've had maybe... 
Leo's had a good Coney. Did you like the Flint I Coney? I did. I did. did? I, okay. I liked okay. their Coney. I thought it was good. Yeah. Um, that's probably the best Coney I've had. I'm I'm in the minority. Yeah. I'm not a big Old Town Coney guy. I don't like their Coney sauce. It's it's more of a Detroit salad. It's also sweeter and very heavily ketchup based. And incredibly overrated. Yeah, uh, fair. <laughs> so I know that'll get me. That'll get yeah, me yeah. shot. People are gonna be outside my home. Uh, so I got corn. I got a burger. Yeah. I got a brat. I'm sorry, a, a Kogo Vienna. Is that all I had so far? Oh, so wings. Yeah, so you said wings. So that's four, right? Is that four, right? So my four. Can I count? That's, that's four. So you got one more food item. One more food item to put Man, on Man, we there. are way different on this, I feel like. But I, I get it. This this is definitely. I want to, I want to, I mean, I do, I love good Brussels sprouts. I like those. Yeah. But you know what I want? I want, I want, I want, a, I want a turkey leg. Okay. I that's want a turkey leg. smoked? Yep. Smoked turkey, smoked turkey leg. Okay. Big smoked turkey leg. Because okay. I know that's. That's gonna be like a full plate, and yeah. I'm gonna die full. Yeah. And I'm eating all this, everything. My doctor would be like, "No, that's not good." Lobster, ooh. What's okay. Trick you got here? trick. Trick's gone up there. So trick saying he wants lobster ravioli, Fine flint choice. coney, Asian zing wings. That's my man right there. Brisket and a smoked turkey leg. Wow, check that out. Okay, now what's your two drinks? My two drinks. Um. McDonald's Coke. Ah, very nice. Okay, okay. McDonald's I didn't expect Coke. that, but that's a good one. Okay. I know. I know. I and um. You know, uh, an Arnold Palmer. Oh, man. An actual Arizona Arnold Palmer? Arnold Palmer. Those are just, I mean, like, the Coke, because I needed to burp everything up. Yeah. The Arnold Palmer for that summer taste. Yeah. This is it. I mean, I know I could have won beer and I could have won all that stuff. But, man, I just want something that I just, uh, that's it, it, man. That's it it. for me. I get it. I get it. No, that, I respect. I, I don't drink them anymore because I drank so much of them for a few summers. To the point where I got photos, I think, out there of me, like, going to Dollar General and buying, like, ten of them at a time. And we would just sit there and drink them. <laughs> but I also mix them with uh, cheap Burnett's vodka with cherry. Oh, Perfect. Perfect. Shit. Because you stay a little hydrated. But because they're very aspartame which I don't normally mind. Yeah. When you drink so much of them, after a while, you're like, that's all you can taste. But I'm telling you, Arnold Palmer <laughs> with Burnett's, like, cherry vodka, some cheap-ass cherry vodka. Fuck that okay. shit. Cause you stay a little hydrated as well, too. You just get a little sugar. So, Fago um, Red Pop and Sweet Tea. Wow. Okay. Okay. It's some good. Sweet Tea? Motherfucker, no. We don't do that Sweet Tea <laughs> shit around here. We don't do it at all. I knew that was going to trigger Lazy you. Yeen. Hey. Binks and Bear and Bean and Brittany say hi. Brittany and, Brittany and Miranda are all hanging out with uh, the animals. So thank you for popping in. I do appreciate that. So um, I'm going to do mine real quick. Yeah. Um, the food yours, items man. might be a little tricky, but uh, um, we're going to get through. White Castle. No. Um, <laughs> uh, Sunshine Roll Sushi from Sushi N. Perfect. Uh, the House Masacholi from Tomato Brothers. Perfect. A big thing of sausage, biscuits, and gravy. Oh. Massive thing of that. Um, probably some form of either a Cuban or like a Jersey style Italian sandwich. Oh man. Probably like a. I would. It's gonna be. I would probably say at gunpoint. I would go with the Jersey Giant Italian sub um, from Lansing, and then a slice of the my grandma's recipe, the the family apple pie. Oh. Uh, and then for drinks. For drinks. MGD, bottled MGD, and uh, my favorite, uh, uh, hot green tea with the, the fucking dunker as well. Like the oh, old man. School. I drink it every morning for the most part. For It's a very, you know, diver- it's a very diverse pl- platter you got there. Because I got to have all the good stuff yeah. in life. Yeah. Like I got my pasta in there, which is the, the you know, Tomato Brothers Mazzacholi. Got that sausage, biscuits, and gravy, man. I'm telling you. You had so, me over here reconsidering the the sushi. That's why I was surprised with you were going with. See, I'm always gonna go sushi first. See, I, I adopted sushi late, so I grew Hi, up on burgers. I, I grew up on burgers, brats, hot right. dogs, yeah. you know, chicken wing. That's what I grew up on. It was you know. tough to not put a kogel in there. Oh, I mean, that's like I said. It, I mean, had I had I adopted sushi younger, yeah. I'm sure that would have made it. Yeah. But it's still. I mean, it's 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 on the fringe. Yeah. Like I, you could easily. Be, they could be like, "Hey, we're out of wings." I'd be like, "Sushi." <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. No, no. Good. The good. A uh, good answer. I think that was that was still pretty diverse. I think you still went with some of the good stuff as well too. So. Um, so here's a question for you, kind of back to the cooking as well, too. So when cooking, um, I, I know you're, you're all over the place. You're doing Blackstone, you're grilling, you're doing a little bit of this. You're smoking clearly as well, too. Um, are you more like an oil or a butter or a Pam? Uh, yeah, like if, if you've got to use that sort of thing. It's, it, man, you know, I'm actually still trying to figure out the perfect situation right. for, you know, what it calls for. Right. Um, oil is, you know, I use oil on a lot of stuff. I, 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 when I go to Horrocks now, though, I do get the infused Horcrux. oils. I'll get the, I have like a garlic infused oil. I like that to have a little extra flavor in there. Yeah. 
Um, but like, you know, I'm starting to learn more about butter again when it comes down to steaks, like compound yeah, butters right. and things of that nature. Yeah. It's just like, you know, you start to find ways to get butter and after the fact, not so much in the cooking process. Yeah. I mean, basting it with butter is nice, but there's people like uh, when they get when we do our tomahawk steaks up for guys, we can I'll smoke this tomahawk steaks. You do tomahawk steaks. Sear yeah. them on the blackstone when we're done, sear, and then that. two pads of butter on top of it. Garlic wrap butter. it up. Let it rest for like 15 minutes, and then when you open it up, and that butter's all soaked into the. Oh, I mean, man, it's Jesus Christ. It, it really just depends. Yeah. Um, and, and then same with oils. Like you know, now when I do my hibachi on the blackstone, I used to use olive oil. Now I use sesame seed oil. Oh. It, Is it better it, for the blackstone too? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, I mean, it, but it also gives you that that more distinct flavor as yeah, opposed that, to just regular oil. Like use a, that sesame that seed oil sesame seed to mix it in with the with the with okay. the fried rice. Okay. Okay. It's um, it's a game changer. Now that that's kind of surprising because uh, I figure as somebody who's a massive fan of Crisco enough to where he <laughs> eat an entire tub Stop. one night. Come on, man! Who ate told, an entire who tub. Almost, uh, was an entire? How much? Of no, that? no, hang. How, no, hold on. But I want. I want to hear no. about this. The, so okay. I, when I when I drink, usually I'm like, I need some crackers Jeez. or some mac and cheese. <laughs> who this eats w- an entire tub of Stop. Crisco? Now let me explain. <laughs> In 2000, and, I think it was 2002. I lived on Bond Street. Yeah. With a couple of buddies. Uh, I don't know if you ever met Sean or Eric. I don't think you did, but. Um, this is the first time that I actually moved out of, of my parents' house, and these guys may or may not have been the best choice to move into. We all we all did the same thing. We all loved drinking. My buddy Sean, he worked at a bar down on um in Old Town. It used to be called Shenanigans. Oh, okay. And um, he worked there, so I would often frequent there after work. He would make me Long Islands, and I would pay for very few of them. Like, I would just get fucking loaded. Uh, yeah, Long Islands. Because my shift at work at the time, I was working out at Stapleton's in Hemlock. And so I'd have to be to work at, like, 3 a.m. to start loading the truck, Oh yeah, that's drive the truck idea. around, and be done by 3 in the afternoon, come home, maybe sometimes 2, and Sean be like, you know, I'll be working at Shenanigans. So I'll be like, well, I'm going to go over to Shenanigans. <laughs> and I would go over there, and I would just I would just get fucking trashed. You'd create some shenanigans. Create some shenanigans at Shenanigans. And Eric was a guy I worked with at Kokomo's, and we used to party a lot, too. And, like, when we all moved in, it was a horrific mistake. Like, oh, it was a shit uh, show. everything from – I remember the – man, before, before – I'm trying to, like – get away from the Crisco thing, I'm but I'll, I'll circle back I'm very curious here. about your snacks. I want to give you an idea. The Crisco thing will make more sense once you realize what okay. was going so on at, at step Bond right. Street. Okay. Um, several events took place there. Uh, we, we dr- First of all, we drank a lot. Yeah. We did a lot of partying. And I remember, dude, we had a, there was a hallway in between the kitchen and the bathroom, very narrow hallway, where we put all of our empties. And when I say empties, like we had our empties there, but we didn't like do anything with them for like a year. Jesus. So, I mean, they're stacked high. Right, right. Like and I only garage. lived there for a year, so, like, we're, this was towards the end, and I was just like, you know, we should just take all these cans back and see if we can get a keg, because what could go wrong? So, we take, I mean, we load up the back of an S10 pickup, and, I mean, th- it's almost up to, like, it's almost going to overflow. Like, the overflow the cab yeah. or something like that? Yeah, okay. And so, we're trying to the mire, and we turn them all in, and we have enough for, like, a keg and a couple, like, 30 packs. Oh shit! So you got some extra. Yeah, we had we had we had a lot of coin there. So we get that, we come back to the house. Uh, we put on a kegger that was just an absolute just shit fest. Full on rager. And I the, and, and mind you, I had to work the next day, and um, I think it was uh, probably around I don't even know what time it was. I just I woke up in my room and all I could hear was this doosh, this banging sound. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? It's like three o'clock in the morning. I have to be, I have to, be to work at like five the next day. And I go out, I go out, I go down the steps, and I go out into this living room. And as I open the door, I just see an axe fly by my face into the wall. And I'm like, whoa! And I look over, and Sean and Eric, they're fucking wasted. Sean has, like, this Chinese throwing star set of, like, Chinese weapons. Yeah. And they're not throwing it at a dartboard or anything. Just at the fucking drywall. Dude, like, Eric's got a fucking Chinese star, and he's like... At the wall, and I'm looking at all the holes in the wall. I'm like, well, we're we're gonna be done here. We're probably gonna get evicted. Right, right, right. So I mean, uh, we drank a lot, we partied a lot, did a lot of going to shenanigans, and like, look, I don't know what happened. I could have been set up, okay? I don't know. But apparently, one night after drinking, when Sean came downstairs, 
I was on the couch, passed out, and next to me was a can of Crisco with the top off, and it looked like there were a couple, like, finger swipes through it. Like, I was just laying down, reaching off the side of the couch, swiping up, and might have... I don't know if I ate it. I didn't have any anything on my face uh-huh. or on my hands. Interesting. But he said, dude, those are your fucking fingers going to that... <laughs> and he was like, you those were fucking are wasted. Those fucking fingers. And, dude... Uh, <laughs> I know, dude. I know. I, that's why I was excited to hear about it. I, uh, dude, it was it was one of the things where I like after he woke me up, I sat there for like 20 minutes, tone, and I was just like, did I was I fucking eating Crisco like it was but like dude, if it was butter, I would have been like that makes sense. I'm stupid, yeah. but butter's good, dude. Mm-hmm. Crisco is fucking Crisco, and I just I don't know if I ate it. I, all I know is Sean was adamant that I did because my, there it literally looked like. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody like crawled through it. That's fucking uh, amazing. So I am never going to say that I ate Crisco, sure. but there is evidence pointing that to, it may have been. My hand was in there. Yeah. It wasn't on my hands. It wasn't down there. I checked. Uh, so th- it's possible, possible I may have consumed some Crisco. May have. Okay. Well. We'll we'll switch a little bit from that. Yeah, I, I this is I, I feel like we're gonna have to do a deep dive on that one. I want to get hold of some no, people. No, we don't. Maybe. Not enough. We can't remember much of it. Oh, uh, sure, sure. Uh, so here's a question for you. Um, I feel like you know these days, especially everybody's got an opinion or whatever it is, but um, sometimes they're controversial. Yeah. What is a controversial hot take that you'll die on the hill about? Can be about anything. I I'm I'm assuming mostly whether if it's like a entertainment of some sort, like. You know, what is something that you feel like, no, no, man, you're never going to change my mind. This is where I stand. Oh, man, a controversial take. Yeah. Something that I just can't get into or that I don't like. <sighs> or it can be something you really like that nobody else likes. You know, whatever, you know how, however you want to interpret this. Man, a controversial take. That's a good question. Um, first of all, give me one here. Let me, let me ponder mine. Sure. But I want to. Well, I know. No, I know you're. Uh, you know master exactly where I'm going. You, I, I, you know, I want to hear it. I you know where it. I'm exactly going. Waterworld Go. is a great movie. Uh, it does. It doesn't deserve the hate that it gets. So there, that that would be that, an example. That, that's going with Waterworld. That, huh? That's definitely something I will die on that fucking hill. Uh, I love that fucking movie. Dry land is not a myth. Dry land is not a myth. Uh, Kevin Costner's acting skills; those are a myth. <laughs> well. uh, uh, well, from what I hear about Yellowstone and some of these other things, I, I don't know if I can say that anymore. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, Yellowstone, obviously, he, he's revered for that. Um, I, I haven't watched, I haven't, I haven't watched, yeah, when he tries to direct, that's usually a disaster. Trick, you better be shaking your head at Waterworld, brother, because that, <laughs> you haven't seen it in a while, you still need to watch it. Uh, man, I'm trying to think of something for you, Tom. I'm trying to think of something that was, something that yeah, I was no, either I into that people don't like or I'm in, not into that everyone loves. Um, if I had to, if, I mean, off the top of my head, I know my the one thing that pisses my wife off is I, I refuse to watch Napoleon Dynamite. You motherfucker and all this I won't, stuff. Too. I know I that's right. That I is won't, one. I won't watch it because of how much hype it got. And I've hyped up stuff in the past. Yeah. But I've heard so many people say, Napoleon Dynamite is so fucking awesome. It's hilarious. I heard so many people talk about it, and I was just like, I'm never watching this movie. You, ever. You fucking... I will never, ever watch Napoleon What would Napoleon it take for Dynamite. us to get you to watch that movie? You can't. Is that going to be I've, it's, I've already spent so many years like, uh, not watching it because everyone hyped it up so and much. And I've heard you say this yeah. fucking No, I won't do it, man. Yes. I won't do it. And it's the 20th anniversary this year of that, in the recent last... 20 years of not... Actually, it's the 20th anniversary of me not giving a fuck. Okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and Orida, the tater tot brand, has teamed up with John Hedder, and um, they're doing like bits of Napoleon stuff, and the, it's, it's great. I can't get enough of it. I love that fucking movie, and it's, it's a travesty that you won't give it the time of day. I feel like that's that's uh, that's a shame. I'm trying to think. There, there's something else in the movie industry recently that I was thinking about that I was like, man, I, I feel like I'm in the minority when it comes to this. Um, I can't remember if it's a particular actor or a m- series of movies. Street Fighter is better than Mortal Kombat. Oh, that's, that's fucking controversial as fuck, dude. You're more, more. I thought you were more of a Street Fighter guy. So, are he's talking about the movies, right? You're talking about the movies, I think, because the Street Fighter movie is a hot fucking mess. Like, see, but they but there's, a, there's a lot of people that appreciate the Street Fighter movie, much like a lot of people. No, I don't like it. No, for a performance, Raul Julia. 
Oh, Ra- yeah, Raul no, Julia, no, he, like, he's the... They, like, there's why, that's why I feel like most people like Street Fighter is because Raul Julia, much like a lot of people, He-Man, Masters of the Universe, that is a, it's not a good movie, that's but like Frank weird. Langella makes it go as Skeletor. Like, he is, like, yeah. the one thing that right. kind of makes I those things. Movie. Yeah, yeah, I love that movie anyways. But I actually think the Mortal Kombat movie is better than the Street Fighter movie because the Mortal Kombat movie doesn't try Which to take one? itself too... Which well, one? maybe it does. The, the, the original 95, one. okay. The original one. Annihilation's shit, don't get me wrong, but the original <laughs> one, the guy that's cast Liu Kang is Liu Kang to me and always will be. He looks like him. Even the guy... They had to bring back the guy from the movie that did Shang Tsung. Your soul. Is mine. To, yeah. to Mortal Kombat 11 because it's so iconic in that role. The way he says it in you know, that all scene that is so, so awesome. I'm too. not saying it's a great film. I mean, Sub-Zero and Scorpion were lame in it. Yeah. And now Scorpion's the face of Mortal Kombat. All I'm saying is, I like Street Fighter, but Raul Julia is the the rest of it. And, yeah. and the stories about fucking JCVD being, like, coked yeah. out the entire time are great. <laughs> and Ming-Na Wen being... Uh, cast as Chun Li, while she might not have the physique of Chun Li in the yeah. games because it's a little ridiculous, she was a great casting of that. But I, that's why I've never heard anybody say that trick. So um, go go figure. The guy that uh, <laughs> like Sweet Tea says that, so I'm not overly surprised either. So okay, that's a good one. So um, here's one for you. So all that you've learned, you know, in life, or all that you could, if you had to choose, would you rather live forever or have the ability to rewind time one time? Uh, 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 live forever. Uh, I wouldn't want to go back and start singing Queen, by the way. I I feel like, um, I feel like the mistakes or anything that I've learned from the past is what's helped me grow going forward. Sure. And now look, I'm not saying I'm a perfect human being. I'm not. I'm far from it. But I feel like if if I want to rewind on one thing, I'm going to want to rewind on other things. And if I rewind on something and change something back then, who knows if it's going to make something even worse in the future or or unlock something different. So I I, I think... There you go. Uh, I want. I'd want to live forever. Uh, just okay. so. Uh, and plus, living forever. Uh, I. I think they both have downfalls. Living forever. Yeah. I'm gonna watch my loved ones pass away, but I'm also gonna see my was a lineage or something down the line as more of my family you know grows and has kids and I get to witness all those things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, going back uh, and changing something one time or going back and doing something differently is going to alter the things that I love now. Mm-hmm. You know, if I go back and change something, who's to say I don't meet Melissa or I don't have these that's, kids? That's uh, okay. And that's, there's just too yeah. much there that I've invested that I love that means everything to me that has helped me become the person I am today. I feel like going back and changing in that, I risk losing a lot of that stuff, and that's just, there's no way. Yeah, that's fair. I, I think that, you know, um, the saint that she is, Melissa, I think if you were rewind <laughs> and fucked up, you you know, she would never have been such a grace of a person to deal with your bullshit. Now, you now be before we else. say saint, there was uh, a time on Bond Street where um, her and I, or, or, like, I, I was wasted, and there was a guy at the party who was, like, really hitting on her. Like, trying, like, his best. Yeah. And she, she made no, she had no interest in this dude. Because she had already found the She'd already the found the winner. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Crisco right, guy. Right, right, right. The Crisco and, uh, guy. There, and, of course, I'm loaded. And because she smiled at him when he said something ridiculous, I was like, oh, oh, you want him now or something? So, like, oh, I, I, turned it, I turned into that guy. Jesus and, dude, Christ. I remember I was upstairs. And she came up to the door of my bedroom, and she knocked on the door, and she's like, what's wrong? I was like, oh, you're flirting with that guy. And, I mean, I mean, I am just talking shit. And she said something, and I was like, or I go, or I said something, and she goes, you say that again, I'm going to fucking knock you out. And I was just, <laughs> I think I said, fuck you, or something like that. I mean, again, horrible. And Tone, she wound up. Had she closed her fist, I wouldn't have woke up until the next day. Cause she came through with like this, like like the move that you normally see. Like a move, fucking like, yeah. palm. But she caught me right here. I mean, and she, I mean, she came out whack. Told my legs were like I was almost done. Like I remember that's the last thing I remember that night because I was just like because she ended up leaving the party. She went home. But I mean, the way she hit me, I was just like, first of all, had she closed her fist, lights out. It would have been game she, over. She was like a fucking. Basketball all yeah, star. Yeah, so I mean, I mean like, she, that's what, and I think wow. that's one of those things where I was just like, okay, I like this girl because she's gonna stand her ground. Where if, if it was some guy pushing for her and she didn't want, it, I know she can defend herself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, when she hit me, dude, I was just like, okay, that's also a passionate woman that realizes mm-hmm. she knows her worth and she's not gonna put up with that kind of bullshit. So I mean, that really helped me grow a little bit. But man, I've never. 
gotten hit that's that hard before ever. I mean, she came across right here, and I mean, my legs were fucking jello, and I thought I was gonna drop. <laughs> she almost fucking dropped. And it, it, it instantly it sobered me up. And then, mind you, I was shit faced, and that instantly like. I was like, whoa. And before I could even say anything, she had already left. That wasn't the Crisco night. No, that was not the Crisco night. That was the ice pack night. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's great. That's great. Uh, I don't know. Um, It seems weird because, like, I'm such a fucking child nerd as you look around and see all the stuff I saved from my childhood even. Um, But for you, like, you know, I know nowadays, you know, and maybe it was more later in life, your basement's pretty nice. You got Mm -hmm. a nice setup. You got a lot of cool collectible shit as well, too. A lot of video game things like that. But growing up as a kid, did you have, like, a favorite toy or maybe, like, a favorite cartoon that leaned into the toy? Like, you know, Transformers was huge for me, so I had a lot of Transformers. Or He-Man was huge for me, so I had a lot of those. those sort of I, had, I had I had a lot of the He-Man stuff. I, loved, I had uh, Grace Cole. I had a lot of the characters yeah. and stuff. Um, I was really big into Voltron. Oh, no yeah, shit. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't tell you a lot about this story now because Voltron was yeah, way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't sure. really move forward with Voltron. At the time, I remember when I was on TV, I was like, this show is fucking sweet. Yeah. I get the fucking character. I could build Voltron. Yeah. So, I mean, I was really big into that. I had a lot of those That's toys. Cool. Um, I had a lot of the He-Man. I had Popples. I thought Popples oh, were the fuck, fucking uh, little balls that you roll up damn. in the things. Did you use it as a Fifi? <laughs> no, that's none oh. of your business. Um... But I, I did. I, I had a lot of the toys. I had a lot of. I had Care Bears. I had Popples. I had He Man. I had GI Joe. I had okay, Go Bots. I had Transformers. I mean, I had a room. I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. I had a room full of like fucking okay. toys. I was into pop culture. I was into Saturday morning cartoons. Right, right. Um, and and that's how I spent a lot of my time. So I mean, I bought into it. Yeah, they, okay. they they got me to buy the got toys. Okay. They got me to put it on my Christmas list. Okay. Uh, so yeah. But I mean, I never got into the whole collecting them and keeping them for a long right, time. Like, oh, you gotta make sure it's clean. I. Again, it, sports always kind of like took the focus. Yeah, so yeah. like I had these toys to play with them, but yeah. the, I was always like, okay, sports are on, TV, t- Lions are playing, Tigers yeah, are playing, yeah, yeah. want to watch that shit. Uh, so I never got into the whole collecting aspect. Right, of right. It. I wish I would because I see the way you have your stuff on display. It's like, man, I know I had some dope ass <laughs> shit back in the right, day. Right. It's probably worth a lot of money that I was just like banging them together. I was like, okay, yeah. these are toys, and but I, I loved it because it was like. I watch these things on Saturday morning. I have the stuff in my house. Yeah. I love playing with these things, that but was, uh, never collected them. That was a nice way of saying, uh, your room down here looks like a 10-year-old lives down here. And that's, no, I mean, that's, that's what, what I want. No, that's, no, I, mean, that's, I have that's mine. Like, I want that. Like, I w- I, honestly, I wish to God I would have had all that stuff, because not just because of that, but the sentimental value, the, st- the yeah. nostalgia of it. I wish I would have had this. I mean, this is fucking amazing what you got going on here. I I had probably a lot of these things and just never fucking thought yeah, about yeah. saving them. Yeah. No, I just, I always want everything just to be like, I, I'm very nostalgic in that yeah. sense. It's, I don't get, nostalgia hits me in certain different ways. Uh, for me, it's literally keeping my childhood fresh. Like, I just, I, I don't know. I can talk all day about the serious yeah. stuff, but down, this is where I, this is where I, I'm, see, I'm, I'm relaxed. Yeah. Like, this is where I oh, get it's relaxed. Tr- that's that's the point that of having thing. a room like this. See, it's mm-hmm. your, it's your childhood. It's comfortable. Like the it one is. thing it's I want to do comfort. more so than figurines and, and like, like the toys I used to have. The one thing I want to surround my basement with right now is movie posters. Like I want to go online and find some of the old movies that I love. Disc replay rotates through so many. Do they really? They're only 10 bucks. I need to go there that, and I got do a that. stack of them over there. Just go over there. I got that Jaws one I'm going to get up soon. I want to get Jaws. I want to get The Thing. I want to get Raiders. God, um, be a good one. Uh, the Thing one I really want. I, mean, I mean, you can get them online too. But yeah. I'm just saying like. If they have my disc replay, I'll just go look just and see. Go, yeah, and just pick and choose board. here and there. I always get one on there. That's yeah. what I really want. Because like, as much as I love games, yeah. movies has movies always is been where I yeah. like, I just, I love movies. I love filmmaking. I love all that stuff. And I'd say that's probably what I'm more nerdy about than anything. Yeah. I play games all the time, but movies, I mean, I grew up on that shit, man. My, my dad always used, it always used to drive him nuts. I, we'd be watching a movie, like, oh, this is directed by so-and-so and starring so-and-so. And he'd be like, you know, if you took school as seriously as you do memorizing movies and stuff, he goes, you would have had all A-pluses. Yep, and he's right. So that's actually a good uh, uh, question or a good way to set me up for this one. So... As you can see, I got a lot of books back here. I don't read as much as I used to, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to. I, of course, never stop really reading comics, but did you read as a kid? And if so, like, what was – was there a book that you're like, this is still one of my favorite books, or I love this book? I mean, I'm talking, like, e- even the classics. Like, probably if I had to say one of my all-time favorite books, is still 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. But, I mean, I've read Call of the Wild, you know, Huckleberry Finn, all that kind of stuff. Is there I, one I for did, you, like a book? I didn't do a, uh, to be, Michael so Crichton, shocking, Shockingly, no, I didn't do a whole lot of reading. I, I read – what was that book – Um. 
Had a bunch of short stories in it. Oh, Playboy. No, no. Something, uh, where the, not where the wild thing, where the creatures, um, where the wild things are, maybe? Is that what it is? That, I mean, there was, we had, like, the attic ones and the, the, where the concrete ends. You had, like, a bunch of short stories. It was one of those. Like, like, I read that. those all the time. I thought those yeah. were fucking good, but I never read, like, Stephen King or Michael Crichton no, or like Peter Benchley. Really? I did, I read Jaws for, um, for a book report, which is, uh, man, have you ever read Jaws? <laughs> no, but it just seems funny that. Since you're not much of a reader, you would definitely read a book based off a movie script where you could just also watch the movie. I, uh, <laughs> well, right. that's the thing. Like, like that. And, and right. had I watched the movie and dubbed the book report on that because I didn't want to read, my teacher would have been like, you failed. Because there are some wild discrepancies between what happens yeah. in the book. Yeah. Hooper dies. Yeah. He fucks Brody's wife. Yeah, I remember And some other stuff. There, there's like, there, I, I forgot all about that because I was just like, memory. I was like, man, this is... Yeah. Fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. some huge differences between the books and the movie. I just remember reading the book, and I was like, I don't remember this in the movie. When does he fuck Brody's wife? I, mean, I don't remember any of this. Never heard that till recently. Yeah. But you didn't do anything like so no Lord of the Rings, nothing like no. that. No, none of the nope. big ones. No, nope. never read them. Classics, em. no Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea. Huckleberry, I, I Tom probably Sawyer, did. I, oh, I did do Huckleberry. Yeah, I did I do feel Huckleberry. Like that was kind of yeah. obvious school. That thing. was one of the school books. Yeah, and yeah. like, I mean, and again, man, it, it's weird to say this, and I just don't know if it's because I'm old. I don't remember a lot of, like, the stuff that I did. I'm right, sure right. I did read books, but I never, ever got to the point where it was, like, once I got to, like, middle school, I spent a lot of sports, played a lot of video games, never really had time to sit down and read something like Stephen King, because that's okay. an investment in time. Like, you, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I just, yeah, you know, right. I never got into it. I never got into it. I'm sure I read stuff. I read Archie. I did Archie books. I thought those were cool. But, I mean, that was, uh, that was I just like Jughead because uh, I could relate to Jughead. Like, he just likes burgers, and that's yeah, fucking and awesome. basically you know? wimpy and Jughead all in one. <laughs> <laughs> fucking great. But, great. yeah, not as, not as much reading okay. as, I mean, probably as much reading as you would expect, but I probably did True. more than what you would think, too. Okay, that's fair. I was just kind of curious because, like, I feel like there's, that's why some of these things I was really actually curious because it's not things that, we talk about so much of the stuff that we have to mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. about we don't really don't get into a lot of those sort of things so i feel like i display my entire life yeah. in front of everybody whereas you know some folks you know yourself included where you might into it but you don't necessarily like tribute to it or or whatever at least outwardly the way i do which is like basically save everything i've ever See, bought i think a lot of my appre- like your appreciation obviously is also the the, the material itself but like oh, you yeah, appreciate a, the the collecting aspect i'm a materialistic of motherfucker me my i appreciate is like everything that i've absorbed internally like remembering movies and Frisco. remember <laughs> Crisco, but like remembering all that stuff, and, and, and that's how I like kind of keep my how I keep it going in my head. Like the movies, the games that I've played, things of that nature. Um, and it's just plus like if I tried to justify buying this stuff now, my wife would fucking kill me. Right, It'd be very difficult for me to pull it up. But they, that's the benefit of saving stuff over the years. Yeah. And buying these things over the many years. If I tried to do this right now, I wouldn't be able to pull it off. Yeah, I'm, I, I've always been very particular about things. Like, I would barely let people borrow my games growing up. Like, yep. my, I got PS1 games that you know are worn from use, mm-hmm. not from like me keeping them out of things. Like, yeah. I they drive. If I see a disc sitting out upside down or laying around in my head, mm-hmm. it's kind of like how you are about uh and um. Mm-hmm. I'm literally trying to like, I'm fighting something in my head from like blowing a gasket basically so. speaking of the quality of stuff do you know the highest compliment i ever got from you was i brought in i think i was trading in what was i trading in? i think i was trading in a oh it was a wii u that i had that i was never using yeah and uh i remember i brought it and this is after bringing i traded in a lot of uh, items like like systems this and, might have been stuff. towards the four maybe it, it might have been it might have been somewhere close to that but i yeah. remember i brought in a wii u a box with all of its stuff and you guys were very um meticulous about like making sure everything was there everything was in good quality my, and this not my yeah i was i c- compared to other stores i was anal and that's why things. it was the highest compliment because i remember i brought in my wii u one time and i can't remember who it was working and they were gonna open it up and you were like don't worry about it it's fine and i was like what and he goes he goes dude you turn in stuff that is like in yeah. pristine condition like the even he he goes i've never he goes i don't have too many people that bring in the boxes that they came in that are still in like mint condition yeah because I did, man. I take care of all of my, my tech. Our boxes, I save so, my yeah, boxes. I save my boxes, and I, I just remember yeah. I brought it in, and he was going to open it up, and he, he was like, don't even worry about it. It's all there. You know, I get to call you. This guy takes that care of stuff. Great. And I remember in my mind, I was just like, shit. Damn, yeah. that's <laughs> it's fucking like, awesome, okay. man. Yeah. I'm a made man at GameStop. I'm like, right. that's awesome. Right, right, right. No, yeah, that, 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 was, that was a big deal. And, you know, after a while, just getting to know certain people yourself in that, clearly in that, at that time, we were still just like customer and like worker. Um, you know, you just knew some people. It's just mm-hmm. so you didn't have to worry about. So, 
Um, so now we both have talked numerous times about, you know, growing up and being like clearly partiers. You're in an area where you've got lots of commerce and things. You can do that. Mm-hmm. I grew up in the fucking country. And right. That's all we had to do. There were nights where we were drinking just straight uh, things of vodka and, and no chasing just to get fucking drunk off eight dollar fucking hundred proof pop off or some yeah. shit like that. Right. But uh, um, but now it's a struggle as we get older, as we know, like even today, I'm still kind of uh, dealing with a little bit of that. But do you ever reflect back and think, man, I went too hard? You're like, gosh, I did go too hard. I mean, I know getting three MIPs in one year is fucking <laughs> tough, but, you know, right? But um, <laughs> what was the arrest in East Lansing part of that, or was that a separate entity <laughs> as well? Too? That was, uh, <laughs> you did your homework. I'm proud of you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I, I picked up uh, three. MIPs, minor in possession. In one year. Uh, year twenty. I was twenty. It was. I had one year to go. Jesus. Christ. I had one year to go, and uh, the 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 one in East Lansing is is significant because. Um, Were you back of the wagon? No, I I, I I don't know. I don't know the coding or the timestamp there, uh-huh. but I was. I'm pretty sure I was pretty close to being the first arrest of 1999, uh, in East Lansing. Um, was down there for New Year's party. And um, my buddy Mark and I, it was just, I mean, it was probably just after midnight, if not at midnight. We were walking around down. Um, he lived on Partying like it was 1999. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Remember how that was on the radio nonstop? Up 201 to Milford. That was my cousin's uh-huh. house. So it was on Milford Street in East Lansing. And Mark and I were outside walking on the street. And we thought it would be a good idea to throw the champagne bottles that we had at streetlights. Because what else are you going to do in East Lansing when what you're drunk? What the fuck? So we're chucking them. And I, I don't think the cops saw us do that. Yeah. But we're walking down the street and like we're not doing it. We don't. As a matter of fact, I know they didn't see it because they weren't doing anything. We didn't have any bottles in our hand at that point. So we're we're just two kids or two twenty year olds walking down the street like nothing going on. Yeah. And looking we sucks. see a cop at the corner, and dude, before I can even say anything, Mark is off and running. Like he's running between houses, and I'm just like. Fuck. So I'm running. Cops are like, well, what are they running from? We got to arrest them. So the cops squeal around the corner. We're running between houses, and Mark is like six four. Like he's this tall kid. He's leaping over tall, shit. Tall, lanky like, kid. I'm this short, chubby guy with no verticality. And we get to this fence, and Mark is up and over. And I'm just like, hey. He's like, just jump up. I'll catch you. Or I'll grab your hand. And before I can even jump, dude, I get laid out. Cop just runs up and then just drills me. <laughs> Keep in mind, I'm wearing a woman's leather jacket. Alicia, I had taken her jacket and I was wearing it outside. Yeah. So I get laid out. Go back to the police station. I mean, it's probably, I think I looked at the thing, it said 1209. So, I mean, I, I got to be pretty close to the first one. I don't, there ain't nobody else getting booked yet. Wow. So I'm like, I got to be close to the first So I get my mug shot wearing a woman's leather jacket with like the ruffles. And a lay around my head, around my neck. That's my mug shot. Do we have? Do you I have do that not, around? I do not have. Can that. we look at that? I wonder if that's some that archive. I hope not. Um, but <laughs> yeah, first arrest. I, I, I'm gonna I, find it. I, I unofficially the first arrest wow. of, of 1999 in East Lansing. Um, the other thing about that was funny that night is I remember I when I got into my cell, and that's how I, I, this is another thing that makes me think I was the first arrest. I was I was no there was nobody else in the cell. I was in there by myself. Uh, right, right, prime. 1999 East Lansing, <laughs> MIPRS. There was nobody in the cell with me, so I passed out on the bench. And I think it was probably about 5 o'clock I woke up, and there was like seven people in there. And I was like, what the fuck? And they're like, yeah, dude, you were snoring. We didn't want to wake you up. So, you know, <laughs> and these are all dudes my oh, age. Oh, my God, this is awesome. They, all these dudes are my age, and yeah. I'm just like, fuck, man. You know, so I get up, and finally I, I was able to make a call to get through to my friend. And I was like, hey, can you come? Or my cousin. I was like, can you come pick me up? And he goes, yeah, run away. And they just, they remember um, at the time there was those, was it, uh, who was American Express commercials where they were like, um, hot dog, $5, this, $7, this, priceless. Yeah, I think it was something like that, right? And so when they came and picked me up, they were like, uh, Brent, MIP, $85, uh, leather jack, or um, what, there, was, there, was MI, there was two of them. There was uh, MIP, minor possession, and I think like, like trying to escape the police or whatever it was. Yeah. And they were like, and then seeing Brent wearing uh, a women's leather jacket with lace around his head and his shoelaces out of his shoes because the cops will let you go in the cell without your shoelaces because they don't want you to hang yourself. Mm -hmm. They're like, seeing that, priceless. So, but yeah, that was my second MIP. And then I got my third MIP uh, at a party here in Saginaw. 
Um, so how so two here and one there? Yep, two in Saginaw, one no, two I'm sorry, two in East Lansing. Okay. One say the set, the third one, I'm sorry, it two went in East Lansing. it went first arrest East Lansing. And then the second one was in Saginaw Township. And then, dude, it must have been, I don't know, three months from my birthday of turning 21, down on East Lansing. And I thought it was so smooth, dude. This Number three I deserve because that was fucking stupid. I'm outside my cousin's house with a beer in his yard, though. I'm in his yard, and I'm, I'm drinking, and these cops walk by on their, their horses. And they look at me, and they're like, how's it going, man? I'm like, oh, you know, I'm good. I'm just trying to ignore them as best I can. And they're like, hey, come on over here for a minute. And I'm like, fuck. So I walk over, and I have the beer, and they're like, do you, you got You wouldn't have to, though. Well, but I, mean, I don't know. They're cops. So I walk over, and I'm like, yes, how, how can I, what, what, what do you need? And he's like, how old are you? I'm like, oh, I'm 22. And he's like, oh, okay. He goes, do you have your license on you? And I'm like, you know, I don't. It's at my car in the parking garage, you know, a ways away. And they're like, oh, okay. And. The cop, you know, another cop's walking behind me. He's like, hey, what's that in your pocket? In my fucking wallet. <laughs> so I break that out. I go, oh, it's my wallet. And he goes, can I see your license? And he goes, all right. And he just writes me up my third MIP right there because I walked on the sidewalk. You fucker. Yeah. So that was number yeah. two. Yeah. So, yeah, wow. three MIPs uh, wow. in, in before 21. That was great. God damn. The, the lose, I, I had a suspended license. I had to have somebody drive me to school and all that. So that was that was really great. How proud were your parents? My parents only knew about two of them. They didn't know about number three. Well, they didn't know about what was it? They didn't know about number two. They didn't know about the one I got the second on township. I didn't tell them about that one. Number three, when I lost my license, that's when they found out. But I only told them I had two. Some piece of shit. Well, a fucking proud. <laughs> yeah, proud parent parents were dude. parents at that point realized he's going nowhere. He's right. not going to graduate college. Right. We need to find him a job where he can just go right to the workforce, and that's what they did. Yeah, let's keep your kids at home a little longer than maybe some <laughs> other people. I suppose at that point. So, <laughs> well, uh, that's awesome. I was uh, I was really excited. That was the one. I'm I glad was you did your homework. I, I appreciate was that. Really excited to get to that one because, uh, I mean, I know people that have. I never actually have because when you're in the country, like. The chances of getting in yeah. trouble, for, I mean, where yeah. we would have campfires in the woods, you know what I mean? Like, it didn't matter. And most of our parents out there would buy us booze because they didn't want us going anywhere. So they, the, pretty simple. Clearly the, the the opposite of even here in Saginaw. When, when I got number two, um, it was a house party, and everybody there was, I mean, there might have been like one person over 21. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, huge party, probably about 40, 50 people in the house. Wow. Um, and when the cops showed <laughs> up, um, they kept all of us. In the living room, we were all oh, in the family. Right, we were all right, in the family right, room, right. and they set up at the kitchen table yeah. with the breathalyzer and a stack of tickets, and just had us all go. I mean, they must have made. I remember. I know they don't do quotas, yeah. but they must have made a bunch, they a bunch of quotas. fucking money that yeah. night because they tick. They gave all of us MIPs. There was probably forty people, and everyone went to the table. They blew. They failed. Ticket. Move on. And I mean, it was just. A, a fucking, fucking line. Bear belt. Yeah, dude. Literally it was like brick in the wall. It was. It wasn't good. It was bad. Oh, that's crazy. So, <laughs> good for you, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that that's wild though. Like I, I can't even fathom that. Like when I got to Central for, I was there for part of a year. Um, uh, I'm surprised I didn't get an MIP actually. Um, I had a guy that was. T- he was tempting cops, so what he decided to do as a dick, mm-hmm. put in his backpack a bunch of Fago and some other shit, just random shit, mm-hmm. and he would walk up and down, wait for him to stop, and he got stopped a couple times, and they felt like jackasses because they'd want to search him, yeah. like he was drinking, it was just fucking sodas and other shit, too, they had nothing on him, just to fucking cops, but in Central, like, because you had so much, like, housing not far from, like, uh, Greek Town and all that mm-hmm. stuff, like, it was, I mean, depending where you're going, most people would walk, of course, especially for first year. Yeah. I mean, there would just be, it would be the same kind of scenario. Like, uh, don't walk this way, because apparently the cops are out. Like, it was just, it's a hot fucking mess. So. I actually have a, a story, now that you mention that. I, I um, at Central, I, I could have got my fourth. I could have got my fourth. What the fuck is this uh, guy? This, this was incredible. Uh, so, I was out with uh, Alicia, go ahead, I, whose coat I was wearing, uh, my friend Christine, my buddy Tom and somebody else, and we were out. I think we went to Wayside. We we we, had, we were able to, to meet get Mark in. is what we, we used to call it. We were able to get in because we're not 21, but we were able to get in and, and we were drinking at yeah. parties and such. And so we're driving back to Alicia's dorm. We're all wasted. Alicia's wasted. She's driving. So I mean, we're if we get pulled over. She's getting a fucking DUI, yeah. and we're all getting at party uh, time. We're all getting MIPs yeah. again. And so we're we're driving home. We're driving to our and whoop whoop whoop. Good cops. 
pulling her over. And we're just like, oh, fuck. Here we go. We're fucked. Yeah, we have yeah. beer in the car. Yeah. And so, we're, no, I'm sorry. We didn't get pulled over. We were parked in the parking lot drinking, and the cops showed up. Oh, okay. So okay, she okay. wasn't driving, but we right. were going to get MIPs because we had a bunch of beer on us. The cop pulls up. We're all going to the central police department. Oh, we're, we're, shit. We're all getting hauled. So we get there. And we're all sitting around. Alicia's in tears. She's getting a DUI. I'm freaking out. I'm like, I'm literally going to get number four. Like, uh, am I ever going to learn? Yeah, no. Okay. So we're sitting there sweating it. This cop comes up to us, and he's like, um, where, do you, where, where are you guys staying? And Alicia, she's like, oh, we're staying at my place. And we're just like, oh. and he's like, all right, I want you guys. We're like, where is this at? And she's like, we're over. And he goes, okay, I want you guys to walk back to your dorm and stay there. And we're just like, well, what's going on? She goes, she's like, we have an issue going on right now. All, all cops need to be out there. There's some kind of stalker guy that's stalking a dorm, and people are they calling. They already got him. That's why no, I no, couldn't no, find no. him. This, this is great, dude. So, like, he lets us go. So we walk back God. to the dorm. Okay, so we walk to the dorm. That's an MIP. The next morning, I wake up, and I'm just like, man, where the fuck are, where, where did I park? Right. I don't remember anything. I'm, I was shit-faced. And so... I was and my friend Christine. She's like, I think you're parked over on this lot somewhere, like a couple blocks away. And so I'm w- doing the morning walk of shame to my car, and I don't know where I'm at. And all of a sudden, I see a cop car pull up, and I'm waving him down. I'm like, Hey, hey, hey! Pulls up, same cop for the night before. And he's like, Do you know? He goes, he's like, What are you doing? I go. Uh, he goes, You looking for your car? And he's like, Yeah. He's like, Get in. I'll take you to your car. So we get to my car. And we get out, and I look at him, and I go, "Hey, did you guys, did you guys catch that stalker?" And he goes, "No, we 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 think we know who he is." And I go, well, "Hey, when you get him, tell him I said thanks." <laughs> you said that to the yeah. cop? And he just smiled, and he goes, "Get out of here." Because <laughs> yeah. that's the only reason. That's the only reason we, so had, he knew. we got let go. Cop knew. Yeah, cop he, knew he, it was fought. the same guy. Yeah, same yeah. guy. And he, he knew, and I go, "Just tell him I uh, tell him I said Maybe thanks." Maybe you guys are there at the same time. Trick. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe you were the stock. Maybe they never caught you. What year was that? Uh, trick, trick? I want to say it was probably, well, I wasn't 21 yet, so either 99 or 2000. God, you guys got, it's got to be the same. 99 probably. God, <laughs> this is going to be one of those things where it's like uh, like uh, uh, Until Dawn where you get different perspectives. Yeah. Dude, 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 but night. like, yeah. dude, the, the cop's face when I said, hey, if you, I go, when you catch him, tell him I said thanks. And he, I, I could tell the cop was like, you motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, you know. Because your friend probably yeah. should have got a DUI and yeah, you probably yeah, should have yeah, got MIPs. Yeah. That's that's uh, that's pretty incredible to hear. Thank you for sharing <laughs> all of that. So, um, well, that said, that's basically. Um, I, I knew I had uh, some other stuff that we can save for another time as well too. But I want to get um, some of the good stuff out of the way as well too. Um, and I definitely you'll be back on at some point. Hell as well yeah, absolutely. Well so, um, but I appreciate you doing this. I appreciate everybody stopping in for the first uh, test stream. Sounds like we got to work with a little bit of audio maybe, so we'll check it out and listen to it too. Yeah. Um, do we still sound good at this point, guys, if you're out there listening? Um, does this sound, still sound all right as of right now? Um, but, uh, you know, hey, again, I really appreciate it. Um, you know, I love being able to do what we do. I know I, I went a little bit longer this time than I, and I told you we might. I feel I like when you have conversation, that's going to happen. It's, it's sometimes hard. I definitely have been trying to be cognitive of it, but um, I super appreciate that stuff. Uh, you know, I definitely want to uh, try to you know, tighten the belt a little, little of it, but uh, I knew, you know, it's going to take a minute to kind of get like a... a, a I didn't realize you did your homework. That's probably what but extended a little bit. But I definitely do homework. <laughs> um, like I said, I take an inspiration from uh, a lot of things that I watch and have intaked, and I find that sometimes that's some of the most... Mm-hmm. That's You can find or learn a lot about people that they might not expect from doing a little bit of homework, and I think that's always going to be something that going forward that was my my intention anyways yeah um but uh yeah and no, i thought you'd probably like that i don't i didn't think that you knew that i had done some homework i thought maybe you suspected i no you that, didn't even suspect okay, <laughs> when, when you mentioned these things i'm in my mind i'm like what the fuck like how does he know me? and then i'm just like he must have talked to melissa because like you can you can always uh, think i'll be questioning her when i get I'm home sure you <laughs> will but uh like i said i don't have a schedule yet for this or who's going to be even on next i would imagine half-ass beer or somebody like that yeah. we, i've been talking with him for a minute about uh, getting on here um as well too but uh, we do appreciate this this is going forward i like i said who knows even when the next one will be i'm just going to kind of try and play it by ear yeah i don't even have a day set necessarily i'm not worried about all that it's a work in like, progress like i said i'm gonna worry more about the um the the later sense of it the the where it grows from evergreen and really kind of push that i love if you can make it live it's great you guys are always out there saying stuff in chat and we'll do our best to 
you know, um, get there, I suppose, at some point. But mostly, it, you know, it's about who's going to be on here. And I want to try and do the best focus I can on that. So uh, if you get a chance, don't forget, as always, check out our, our, our pals and our partners. Uh, Seven Dungeons will be live. Uh, I don't know if they're doing Monday because of the holiday. He is. But, he is. Okay, so yep. 7 p.m., uh, make sure to... Uh, you know, stop in once in a while and check those guys out. If you like D&D, &D, like I said, D&D has been a big thing in my life for a long time, even though I don't play it and I want to and I dream about it nonstop. Um, these guys are doing great work, and I love what uh, Chris is doing out there with these guys. So um, he puts a lot of time into it, and they all do. So make mm -hmm. sure to check them out as well. And then, of course, um, throughout the week, you can check out uh, half S Beer Review. Always, uh, uh, you know, drop in some short or some beer uh, review out there. You know, I'm wearing my, can't really see it. But that shirt is got awesome. My beer Quest shirt on as well, too. My merch store, sir, our, our merch store is still down. I'm going to try and repair that as soon as I can. I've got some items up there. It's just time consuming and a lot of fucking just work. Just good items, though. We got pints, and that's huge. Now, yeah, we, now we can get pints. You can get thongs. Yeah. <laughs> you want my face on your yes. fucking wiener or something? <laughs> there you go. Right on the pee hole. So, um, but uh, no, thank you so much, everybody. We always appreciate uh, the support, whether you're here live right now yeah. um, or you're actually watching posts in one of the streaming services. We do thank you for that. If you get a chance, please, you know, give us a like, follow, sub, whatever it might be for each platform. The comments are huge for us. If you can, mm -hmm. YouTube, we yeah. love that back and forth. Um, the conversations get great um, out there as well, too. But again, we can't thank you enough. So, um, and thank you to you for uh, being on and helping and getting everything set up. I really appreciate My you. My pleasure. Appreciate, yeah, all we do, all the stuff is just banter and babble. You put a lot of extra time into it. That, um, you know, definitely you you have a, a a thought of what you like things look at, which makes it so everything looks good and we you know certainly uh can can appreciate that so thanks man. um yeah but look forward to more we'll have more uh, more people on over time here and be able to talk and hear stories and you know just have some good conversations so, oh yeah but uh that's gonna do it for us today for the first episode episode zero the test stream is this thing on of let setting the tone um you'll see us back soon so not uh wednesday sometime soon soon just now when have a great day guys <laughs>